What's up, what's up, what's up? It's Brand Man Sean. And I'm Corey. And we are back with No Labels Necessary. This is episode nine of No Labels Necessary. And you can catch us here, of course, on YouTube, but anywhere you listen to podcasts as well, every Tuesday and Thursday, every right? Tuesday and Thursday. Tuesday and Thursday, Tuesday baby. And Thursday. So, so check up on us. And real quick, if you don't know who we are, right? We both are co-founders of Contrabrand Music Marketing Agency. We've done some pretty dope things in the industry, some pretty cool endeavors, artist successes. But here, we are here to talk content, music, marketing, and branding, and have fun while we do it. So that's exactly what we're going to do. All right? Today... Topics include La Russell. People have been asking us to talk about La Russell. We're not going to go deep on him today, but got a little bit to talk about him. Um, what else are we talking about today? Some NIL stuff. Y'all don't know about NIL. We talking about some new artists that are going to be coming in. So y'all enjoy that conversation. And last thing, there's going to be some other things, but we got to talk about Taylor Swift mm. yet again as well. She's, uh, she's just, <laughs> it's so many things around her, but it's all relevant to y'all. So stay in for all that stuff. But the first thing, I want to go straight to the NIL deal. Now, what I when I say NIL, for y'all who do not know, Chikori, you want to describe NIL actually for people while I bring this up? Describe NIL? Yeah, like the your the NIL deals. The NIL deal. You don't know what they're not. Oh, come yeah, on. Man. That's I was, I was waiting for the, the oh, explanation. Oh shit. <laughs> like, oh shit, man. I just assumed that you know. All right, hold up. I'm gonna read the specific definition then okay. so we can start from ground zero because that means a lot of people don't uh might not know that all right but you'll know what i'm talking about once i share it like you'll still have an idea all right nil nil is short for name image and likeness and nil refers to the way that college athletes can receive compensation using an athlete's nil would involve a brand leveraging their name image and likeness through marketing and or promotional services. It's crazy. I didn't know how to turn. Oh, yeah. That's yeah. that's that's yeah. the term. So <laughs> all these years, right, athletes cannot take official brand deals. Why? Because that kept them from being a spot. Uh, that kept them from being an amateur when they were a college athlete, right? Oh, okay, that's yeah. what that whole yeah. thing is, right? Oh, I can't work with Nike, have a sponsorship deal until I go to the NBA. Because once you're a, a professional, you have those type of deals, you can no longer play college ball, right? Mm, okay. That's what that is. Okay. Huge finesse. Huge finesse, <laughs> bro. Because it's like, why? what is me? Well, we can get into the fact that like my my name is my name and I should be making money off my name. But what is me actually going to college for a year have to do with me going to the NBA? Yeah, exactly. Or the Nothing. money. It's like it's no different if I was working at Starbucks while doing this on the side, you know. But now I don't have yeah. to because I should be able to make this money. Off my name, right? <laughs> so, you know, they've been finessing people for for years. We can go <laughs> that's like a whole nother tangent, how deep you can go with that. And then of course there's been athletes who have been finessing that rule and has been creating trouble. Like Reggie Reggie Bush got the Heisman trophy. They revoked his Heisman trophy because apparently he got some money and then he says he didn't get the money. He's appealing that or whatever. But all those type it's like it's been a really, really serious thing. And now the NIL situation comes. It's actually an athlete's equivalent to the legal legalization of weed. Mm, okay. Right? You got all yeah. these folks who yeah. done <laughs> suffered, right? Now they're watching these other people thrive by why they get checks. <laughs> right? So this particular situation that I wanted to talk about is actually an artist, all right? And she's NIL related, but I think it's dope because it's like it's something that I don't think people really talk too much about it translates when it came to nil initially this artist her name is flage i believe i said that right uh and she's actually dope i can play a couple seconds of her freestyle but she just signed a shoe deal with puma right signs a shoe deal with puma which is something you can't do as an an athlete prior to the nil situation um that they've had i think it's been maybe two years three um now I haven't been able to do that. So now she can do that. That's great. Cool. A college athlete actually can sign. But why this is important to me or interesting to me is because she's a hooper, but she's also a rapper. Yeah. Right. And Rock Nation, you know, they got Rock Nation sports. Yeah. And then obviously Rock Nation is Rock Nation. So 
one, I wonder how far ahead did they see that coming? I'm sure they were some of the people lobbying to get NIL resolved. Yeah, yeah, 100%. So yeah, and now you have both sides. We already know how close culture and music, uh, not co culture and sports are in general. Well, shoot, culture is music and sports damn near, yeah. right? The arts and sports, entertainment. So you're able to start seeing a lot of these college athletes possibly uh, become artists, which actually are. Right, so you know Johnny Two Phones, right? Yeah. You know, he played ball. I didn't know that. Yeah, he played ball. And then obviously he's Johnny Two Phones now. All right, he quit just to commit to the to the music. Shout out to Johnny. Yeah, shout out to him. We know J. Cole play ball. <laughs> yeah. All right. So we'll start, instead of finding the ex athletes, we're going to see the athletes be athletes while they're moving. Yeah. Right? And I was just looking at that. That's what made this interesting. I just peeped the last line where it says she's just, she's going to start her freshman year. So she's not out of high school yet. Or she, or I think she's technically just started because the season is, you know, basketball started. Okay. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? But yeah, this is. You people sign these ideals, yeah, in high school, bro. That's crazy, bro. Yes, yeah. yes. <laughs> like, hey, man, I wonder. I, mean, I think, I think I saw somebody who might have an NIL in middle school, bro. In middle school? Oh yeah. Yo, sports. You want to talk about music when it comes to A and R? Sports is ridiculous, man. They watch. They watch all the way up. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. That I did know. Yeah, that'd yeah. be like your 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 sixth grade games yes. and shit. You know what I'm yes. saying? Cheering you on. Yeah, yeah. Was, it's been um, you know plenty of stories where this such and such is committed to Duke and he's in ninth grade. He got four more years. Yeah. And sometimes those people switch up, but like I think this is really interesting because this is a new type of competition for artists or a new type of way in for artists. Right, because oh, yeah. we've always known that school is a great space and place to market your music. Right, and the the problem often times that people face is getting beyond school. Yeah, right. Oh, you can create a a, a, a song about your school that blows up within the school, and that's pretty easy to do. Now, how do you go beyond that? Right, yeah, yeah. that's pretty much the struggle that most people face. Johnny has done it well. Golden has done it well, but both of them literally went their route. Song about the school at some point and then take off. Yeah, flip it. Right? Flip it. But you got to know how to flip it. The thing is, though, you add athlete to the mix. Like, athlete is like the equivalent. It's like an A&R. It's, it's just that inside network where you can influence so many people mm. so easily because once you get something in the locker room, and make it a part of sports culture. You got other athletes that come on to that really quickly. You have the rest of the school that are influenced by athletes. So for me to not only be an artist, because I like to rap and just do my own music, but for me to now be supported truly from a label standpoint, mm -hmm. that's different. Yeah. Because I imagine, I, I don't know this, I would have to look it up, but I wonder if people actually could have signed an artist deal this is, you know, a combination, right? It is Rock Nation. They do everything. But I wonder could an artist, a, a, a basketball player or a football player, whatever you are, have a record deal in college before? That's a good point. Because it's not a, yeah. doesn't make you a professional basketball player, right? Yeah, it makes right? you yeah, a professional recording artist. Yeah. So I, they, and they are allowed to have professional jobs while? That, that right there might be the key. No. Okay. Yeah. Maybe right. that's a part of it. Yeah. Like, it's almost like a title, man. You know how many professional artists and how many signed artists yeah. <laughs> aren't even doing as well as unsigned artists? Like, I don't know. That's that's a weird space. If you yeah. look at music the way you look at it, but they probably look at it as a black and white thing. Yeah, and I would imagine, too, they don't want the brand attention going to the label. You know, it's like, oh, this, we would much rather your celebrityism be affecting the school and our yeah. ticket sales rather than be like, hey, look at what this Atlantic records artists is doing I, I could imagine that's a part of it that is a hey, that's that was a part of the issue that <laughs> people had it's like yo you can monetize the names on our jersey but we can't monetize the yeah. name on our jersey i can't even sign somebody and like let somebody pay me 50 dollars for this thing it's technically yeah. wrong and it's illegal that somebody want to buy the shirt off my back or whatever because i made a game winning shot in it so yeah i, I don't know that that might be part of it. Maybe you couldn't even be a, a artist. Yeah, I'm saying, has there ever been a, a has there ever been a college athlete that got far in music? Because most of the athletes I'm familiar with that get into music, they're usually professional by the time we, we at least start to hear about it. Seriously, 
or they start or they're professionals in their sport before it sounds like they start like putting out there that they do that. So I'm trying to think, has there ever been like a college athlete? I don't know. Yeah, I'm, I don't know. That's making me think because when you say it out loud, it doesn't make sense. When you think about it, like, bro, you mean to tell me of all these basketball, you know what I'm saying? These basketball teams, these football teams, these baseball, soccer, there ain't one motherfucker on there trying to rap or sing. Oh, we know it is. Yeah, well, that's what I'm saying. That's, we know, yeah, that's, that's why I'm, she's here. Yeah, I'm thinking about it now. It's like, damn, that hasn't made sense. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. it's, it's a hotbed. There, there are instant influences. Who wouldn't use that? To, at least try to feel that music, but now it's, it's people yeah. together. They can't, bro. Like, oh, they couldn't. You know, they, they couldn't. It's a <laughs> that's crazy. It's a crazy system, man. Because they also, you know, outside of the financial aspect of it, they put it around like focus, right? Yeah. Do, are you committed to this or not? Yeah. So you got to leave. Remember, like blue play, blueface played uh, college football for yeah. okay, a year yeah. or two or something like that, right? So. There's never been at the same time that I've seen personally. I'm sure there maybe there has been somebody do it. Hey, y'all put it in the comments. Help us so yeah, we can just have another yeah. topic, yeah. right? But one, her freestyles though. So y'all, I'm just say y'all go check her out. Like we're not gonna play like because uh, I don't even know. We might even get copyrighted or whatever. But like uh, the, her doing it at the same time and being able to play that game, we're gonna be able to see more of that type of stuff. And it's gonna be interesting for the people who are artists and and they don't have to make the decision early on. So go get your free money in college, have deals, which is money, money. You, you're talking about like million dollar, multi-million dollar deals that are happening for these college students go before they go into college. Yeah. Right. And and then you can I don't know, incubate your artistry under the safety net of school. Yeah, that's crazy, bro. That's, <laughs> so she's really like the pro, she's got to be like the prototype of that, that whole model. One of them. Yeah. One of them. I'm surprised that it's a a woman as well, not because, you know, a woman can't do something like that, but it's just you typically don't find people doing – typically – women are later on in the curve. Like, it's like, oh, just naturally, they go to male athletes, mm. right? And a lot of the males are already like rapping, okay, or, or trying to do some music. We're going to sign this and we're going to start here. But to ha- take on an artist and support her in these two ways and have her in this in these type of outlets where she's always already doing interviews, because that clip I shared, right? That's an interview for her music yeah, and rapping. Like to actually put her in that circuit and, and lead that way is really interesting. She's dope as hell. Um, everything I've heard, by the way, but it's, it's dope to see that they're actually it's going to be a woman that's early on on this curve versus the opposite. Um, so, all right, I think this is something we, I'm actually going to like look a lot deeper into. I think we should actually kind of follow the athlete artist mm-hmm. thing a lot more because it goes back to culture mixing. Remember Yeah. How we talked about everybody is the artist competition. Now <laughs> you got the athlete artist, you got the politician, you got the, the regular content creator and everybody's making some type of music. But now you got these people being support. What well, shoot now everybody's being supported by the infrastructure, right? That's the, that's the thing that makes it so crazy for uh, artists to deal with. Like yeah. I could be an artist who likes to ball, and you got like the crew league where Chris Brown and all these other people play with their teams, but they not playing on NBA games. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? They're not yeah. fighting with the like the NBA players ain't competing them with for NBA money. But you got artists competing with all these other types of people for Atlantic Records money. Yeah. You know Anybody what I mean? with some social media <laughs> attention. Anybody bro. with social media. That part is crazy, man. <laughs> yeah. It, and it's just making me think. Like the whole athlete thing is crazy, but I'm thinking about this random TikToker I found like two weeks ago. I think he's like a golfer or something. He was signed to Vayner Media, but he's in college. And I remember thinking at the time, like, I remember it didn't click then. I was like, oh, he's on, he's in college on you know, Vayner Media. You know what I'm saying? But it's like, so even they're starting to see that. And they're, well, I'm, I'm going to guess they probably, like, they probably been lobbying for it and been fighting for it in the back Yeah, because so, you know he got Vayner Sports yeah, exactly. too. Yeah. I'm, I'm thinking about So he has Vayner Sports, Jay-Z got, you know, that side of everything. So it's like, are we going to fight for this shit so we can be the first ones to get these people that can take advantage of it? Yeah, it's about, be, it's about to be ugly, bro. Because it's such a, I don't know, it's, it's going to be bad, bro, I think, for artists. Because, like, bro, being a, a big sports player immediately makes you, like, influential. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, almost immediately. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. you, you get a strong head start. Yep. Especially if you, I mean, like, her narrative, right, was like, oh, we, we're not taking the eh ones. We're taking the ones that's already building some celebrityism and within the sport they do. So, that's an easy flip at that point, right? Mm-hmm. Like, you already got X amount of 
tens of thousands to hundreds of thousand people paying attention to you, yeah, bro, it's about to, the game about to be ugly, bro. It's about to be. It's gonna be real. But in a good way, you know what I'm saying? People like us, but good way. <laughs> <laughs> it's about to be great. Yo, and it, I mean, it's beautiful because you've seen so many times careers get fumbled that were possible in terms of like sports stars who wanted to be in music and vice versa because the infrastructure wasn't clear. It was that one or the other. But now VaynerMedia knows how to monetize culture, mm -hmm. right? That's what we do, all right? So the system is there, full funnel. Rock Nation, they know how to monetize and navigate culture. So we can easily slide you from this athlete to that side of the culture versus being, again, two separate companies. Oh yeah, you're doing what you're doing now. Now you gotta go find a record label. So all the development is clean throughout yeah. the entire process, man. Right, and, and I, it just clicked again, bro. Like the, the brand narrative they, they're building out. That's why the first thing I saw of her, like heavy was that freestyle clip. You know what I'm saying? Her freestyle oh, yeah. was like, let's go ahead and start setting the foundation, bro. Like, yo, she dope rapper, right? Like yep. you said, like this is a music interview, but she, she made sure to throw that narrative in there. Right. Spin it. Yeah, it's like they're literally planting the seeds now. It's going to be interesting to see like where she's at and like, because I mean, they don't, you know, she getting her push in the holiday time. You know, we already had that, that whole talk about where it's mm -hmm. going to be. But it's going to be interesting to see like what she looks like for her around like the summer. You know what I'm saying? Right. Especially like, what, because basketball season open around with, over by right. the top of spring. Yes. Yeah, so what is it going to yeah. look like yeah. when in between seasons? Mm -hmm. Yeah. But she also going to have that whole season to build the attention, come off the season, be fresh on it, right? Good or bad, because the season is in it. So that's like, so that to me it will be the start of the rollout when the season's over with. Especially if you win, that's definitely gotta be the start of the rollout. If you lose, yeah. you know, maybe like a week or two later, you know what I'm saying? Kick, kick <laughs> take the rollout, a break. You know, you know, take a little Feel break. Feel bad for a second. <laughs> yeah. You know what I Let mean? that be the narrative for a yeah. while and then get back into it. <laughs> All right. Well, it's like either way, bro, like yeah, coming off of season top of spring to then go into the summer rollout. With like that behind you for the last six, seven months, yeah, that's gonna be wild. Yeah, yeah, they're gonna it, it really take time. Oh my gosh! And another thing, if I think about from a company standpoint, if you're getting both sides in that regard, and look, I could be wrong where technically they might not have the artist side of it, yeah, right? Technically, yeah. they might not. I don't know, yeah. right? So let's put that out there. But we still know what's up, right? This yeah. is Rock Nation. They're, not, they're gonna want to. <laughs> it only makes sense in some ways, you know what I mean? Um, and the resources, look, how did she get here, right? She, matter of fact, let me see, sign, rock star. Yeah, like, it just makes sense. She's probably in some way involved, or at least they made that a part of the sale. Hey, we have this access, mm -hmm. right? You know what it is over here. Right. Yeah. From a company standpoint, bro, how hard is it to monetize an artist? Scale of one in ten, like a like a seven and a half, eight at least. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And how long does it take typically to be able to monetize an artist? Like I sign an artist, they're they're developing, and then yo, we can seriously seriously start making that money back. I feel like if you're lucky, like two or three years if you're lucky. You know what I'm saying? As a constant, yeah. like in in a lot of cases, it really is that, right? Yeah, we we, we yeah. see the pop, but like that's it, right? Yeah. Two or three if you're lucky. I would probably say five, six. You know what I'm saying? If you one of the unlucky few. <laughs> <laughs> Shit, you you still the lucky few if you pop yeah, at five or six. Yeah, like, you're right. That's true. Yeah, yeah. they have yeah. a real career. Most people never, right? <laughs> so if that's happening, I now damn near can monetize immediately from the athlete side. Yeah. Wow, I'm waiting for this money to be made from the artist side. Or even figuring the artist side out. We yeah, know figuring what, yeah, it out. They're going to have to go through with that. Exactly. Yeah. They're yeah. still developing. And maybe look, maybe there's an L completely. Who knows? But that even from a business standpoint makes a lot of sense. Because so, I don't have to wait, worry about all those things. And while you're an athlete, it's funny. It probably creates extra because you it's now a novel thing that you're an artist. Mm -hmm. Right? So it's attractive because you're not graded by the same you know, criteria as somebody who's not an artist. So you look more successful than, I don't want to say more successful than you are. It's just not great. It looks the easier. Same. Yeah. It looks easier. Yeah. From the other side. They right. have their own tribulations they have to go through, the artist, athletes, or the athlete artists, but it definitely looks easier yeah. from the outside looking in. Right. Yeah. Right. So like, you come out with a song, it's almost fun that you came out with. Mm -hmm. Not, people don't judge it as hard because this isn't the only thing we're judging you on. So, there's all these benefits to that as an athlete, but again, as a company, if I can begin to monetize with these brand deals with Puma, all right, like this is how you know 
Rock Nation, man. Like, come on now. Puma, right? <laughs> this is all, this is rock. Or whatever other type of deals that you might be monetizing this personality from. Outside of just your regular stuff, but the things that additionally come from um, music as well. well. Which brings me another question. Like, if I could do that, and then finally when the music stuff pops out, that's a beautiful situation. You take away Again, so much risk that comes from music. And everybody's been waiting time and time, like year after year after year, figuring out ways to decrease the risk of an artist. Like artists, y'all don't know. Look, I get deals have been historically really bad, but y'all also have to understand that like there's a high, high risk historically. It's a lower risk. That's why deals are, are become are are better. That's mm-hmm. actually why it's like, oh yeah, because we can A and R a little bit better. We can look at data. We yeah. can we didn't have to pick you up until a certain point, right? We yeah. didn't have to pick you up from um, until a certain point. There's all these other factors that put people in a position to actually offer better deals. It doesn't mean there's not people offering trash deals. That's always going to happen. Like that, <laughs> people are always going to get in where they fit in. There's going to be those characters, but. A huge part of it is literally just where the marketplace is. People can make smarter decisions. And on top of that, like, how can I make, uh, again, minimize that that risk? So, yes, I came on this to- uh, this TikTok artist. The shit already has a million streams from TikTok. We're not starting from zero. Let me get that single up off them mm-hmm. and get that. Or let me get that single up off them and... F- but a part of that, I'm signing him. So hopefully he comes up with something else. But his <laughs> single is going to at least get me to break even. So I'll, he's not as much of a risk, right? Yeah. This isn't a single, but this this being an athlete is in some ways equivalent to being a single. Probably even better in some ways yeah. than being a single that has some momentum. Yeah, you know? Like I said, the, mon- the, the monetization rod is already there. So it's like we can literally cover that gap where we're losing money on you, on your music brand by just Maybe not hyper focus on the athlete brand, but we have the option to if we need to, right? If yeah. shit start getting dry, hey man, I know you want to put this merch out and go on tour, but let's get some more of these jerseys out. You know what I'm saying? Like right. first, like let's let's get that stacked out first, and yeah. then flip it from there. So it, it's it's interesting, bro. Like like thinking of it that way, because like I said, I wasn't aware that they were kept, even kept out the competition like that. I always thought it was just like you know, because you you meet so many athletes and they want to be artists. <laughs> right, like I feel like that's a yeah. secret desire of like damn near every athlete. Yep. So I always thought they were just keeping themselves out of the game because of the love for the sport. I didn't know they literally couldn't hop in the game. Now that that door is wide open, bro, no, it's gonna it's gonna be ugly. Yeah, it's gonna be a, <laughs> a very very interesting. Mix, we just need man. one to hit that actually got really really fine music. Like usually they're like at max like okay, you know what I'm saying? Or good is probably like the highest bar personally I've right. seen from artists in that world. I think that we get one that. Cracks the quality aspect of it, right? And has yeah. this machine behind it, bro. It's gonna be bad. Pop out with a hit, hit. Yeah, it's gonna be ugly, bro. That's gonna be something. <laughs> that is gonna be something. Yeah, I mean, we know we've seen the prototypes. Deion Sanders dropped his track. It wasn't really a good song. You know what I mean? His music wasn't good, but None of them ever are, you know, <laughs> yeah. be like, it was entertaining, yeah. right? It was entertaining. It'd Shaq, be great for the moment. Shaq arguably had like some solid stuff, like his track with Biggie, thirty years you know ago, I mean? hey, thirty years ago, <laughs> and. Yeah, it was some pretty <laughs> solid music. Alonzo Ball is like one of the more recent artists that I could think of. Oh, we get a good athlete freestyle was, at least yeah. once a year. Anything? Athlete freestyles. Just yeah. better at more, there's better athlete freestyles than athlete music. Yeah, that's, 100%. That is a fact. They're good at maintaining the image for like long enough for it to be interesting. And then once it comes <laughs> to like the super long term work aspect of it, I think that's what we start to lose. Right. A lot of them. Yeah, because it's different. It's a it's different a, yeah, type of work. Like, it's like I wake up, you know, I go on this court, this field. I'm that nigga, I'm top 50, whatever, to now have to go back to the music side where I'm one of many over here, you know what I'm saying? Like the whole big fish, small pun thing, small fish, big pun. Right. That can't feel good. Nah. <laughs> nah, it can't. It can't. It's like, now I just made a quarter million over here. I checked my Spotify streams. I made $36, bro. Now I, can't go back. <laughs> I can't go back to that. So I get it. I get why. Yeah. But, yeah, that's just going to be interesting, bro. Like I said, like built-in influencer base, bro. It just got to keep you going long enough. Yeah, starting up from ground zero is, is definitely hard when you <laughs> when you're already used to that upper level. Part of the interruption, I have to take this quick commercial break to let you know that we are sponsored by me because I signed myself. We signed ourselves. It's this brand man network. That's why we're called No Labels Necessary because no label, nobody else is necessary for us to get the train moving. So if you could just subscribe to show appreciation, we'd really appreciate that. Back to the program. Let's get into this right here, though. Um, I want to talk about first being first, not mattering. Now, 
why am I talking about this? You know, you remember our conversation we had about that? Yeah, about Russ and the, the pyramid. Russ and the pyramids. Yeah, comments ugly. Yeah, <laughs> a lot of interesting comments, and there, there's a lot of interesting takes that I think we can expand on. So there's a lot of people that were like, "Oh, Russ wasn't first. first. Yeah. You know, there's some group called was it I am or something? Yeah, like a French group. Yeah, some French group, yeah. right? That performed in, on in the pyramids already, and. What I'd say to that, cool. Yeah. But the reality is nobody cares. Right? And that's how it works. And I'm not saying that to disrespect the group, but this is literally how marketing works. And that's mm-hmm. what I want that to be a jump, a jumping um a spark for a, this conversation. Is what well, really the way this shit works is it's first to mind, not first in reality. This person has the Migos flow, right? Mm-hmm. You remember when the Migos flow popped off and then there are all these old heads that were like, well, this person had that flow and this person had that yeah, flow, right? Got it from blah, blah. The youth don't care, yeah, right? Because it was first in their head, yeah, right? It might be nice from a historical standpoint to say, oh, well, I can see where it originated. Like, even if you're somebody who's like more respectful, like, okay, I, I see it originated back there, but it doesn't hit the same. Yeah, When I hear from this person, than I do from the older person or just the originator because I got it from that new person's delivery first. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, so first to mind is far more important than actually being first. Now, I'm not saying that they finesse this. I just misspoke apparently on the podcast because I remember that it was a headline because I see some headline headlines. I looked at it later. They get specific. There's another thing. Mm-hmm. First solo Rap artist. <laughs> so all y'all French duo people talking about some group. Hey, he's the first solo, <laughs> apparently. But even if he's not, and y'all want to whip out somebody else, guess what? Nobody cares because we know about Russ first, right? Yeah. That's just gonna how it works, yeah. right? This is Kanye like with the stage, right? Kanye wasn't the first person to have a floating stage, but most people's experience, at least over here, right, in America, was Kanye with a floating stage. Yeah. And oh my gosh, he's so genius. He's so visionary. And guess what? When you find out there's a guy over in Africa that did a floating stage, it doesn't deduct Kanye's genius points in people's mind enough (laughs) to actually matter because I knew about his first. And for some reason, there's the cognitive dissonance that just still lasts. And I think a lot of people even understand that, especially Mm -hmm. some of these people on the pop scale. They're like, all right, cool. That might I might lose five culture points when they find out the truth, but shit, I gained 20 from it, so what yeah, is yeah, <laughs> it? It yeah. is what it is. The new people coming there from the look are outpacing the, the people that remembering that this was something else right. first or coming right. from it. Yeah. And overall, they didn't get so deep into that person's fan base that did it originally that like to actually truly care long term. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. So like that's the way that marketing mar- works, right? It's not just the reality of ownership. So the, like ownership are two things actually. So you can legally copyright something, but if everybody knows me for this, right? I have a level of ownership in the people's minds. Yeah. So Jacor, you wrote this song. Well, shoot, this is the reality, right? There might be a songwriter who writes a song and for whatever reason they they own it. But I sing that shit. Everybody sees my face and knows me. It's my song in their head, though. Yeah. Like, I get that technically Ja'Cory wrote it, but this is Sean's song, man. Like, I don't even care that you can sing better than him. Like, Pharrell says uh, CeeLo has a... His version of Happy is better mm-hmm. than his, right? Pharrell says that. It's like, hey, bro. Shit wouldn't have hit the same. Hey, it wouldn't hit the same. <laughs> it might have hit... <laughs> If I heard his first, but it's too late. Yeah. Yours is already in my mind. That's yeah. just that's, that's just the way it go. Right? That was part of prostitute. <laughs> Remember when Jacquees had the uh the Buddha remix? Yeah, the element shit. Hey, yeah. they're like, we gotta stump this shit out. It's <laughs> like Jacquees, you did that shit too soon, man. Like it, you getting traction and it's hitting some people first before <laughs> Ellis does everything that it needs to do. Well, because of the show, like, sing, sing that Jacquees version. You mean the version of my shit? <laughs> <laughs> right, <laughs> right. So it's one thing if you waited like a year or this thing had already hit his main accolades. Now it's giving the song an extra lift that's truly a tribute to the song. But it's the wrong. It's a distraction at that phase. So I understand, you know, why they stumped that out. But um, but man, man that version was hard, bro. I was one of the people that had that shit on my computer as a like I had had no um 
like playlists, no other tracks. Every once in a while, do I just go to that one file and bump that shit like five times? Like this shit. <laughs> but that, that remix is what taught me that I don't think radios be clearing shit because I remember that shit used to play on the radio all the time here. Yes, that's like there's no like how is this remix it's like playing on the radio? Like is that, I'm like yes. either the DJs don't give a fuck and they just like yo we gonna break all codes and regulations or there's something in that shit that I don't know about that lets them do it. See, but that was a song that made me think. There's about a <laughs> there's a. Cause I want to get back to the first stuff yeah, yeah. and really break that down, but there's a remix or an alternate version of um, dang, I wish I knew you wanted me. What's the actual official the, the name? Steve Lacey joint. Yeah, I yeah. forgot the actual official name. Right. Shiny. That shit goes hard, dog. And I was like, dang, they remix it or whatever. I cannot find it on the internet. <laughs> I cannot find it. It has like extra bass to it and everything. Yeah. And they play it so much. And it seems so regular. For a second, I actually started to doubt. I'm like, did this shit always have this bass in it? And I forgot. I had to go back to the regular songs. I, like, I knew this didn't have bass in it like this. <laughs> and it's, it's, it's perfect. I found up sped up versions, but it's more like the hyper pop sped up. Yeah. It's not that. It's it's a high, like a, you know, faster pace. And there's just this bass drop in the back. That's all. That's it. There's yeah. no feature, nothing. That, Bro, it goes so hard though. It goes so it might hard. Be some TikTok shit. I don't know. I don't know. I, yeah, I, may, I I haven't checked TikTok. I've looked at like uh Spotify and, and YouTube, but that small switch, yeah. yo, yeah. It, it goes. Hard. I don't I don't know how to find stuff when the, when it plays on the radio though. Um, now with that being said, imagine if I heard that first, right? And then I was like, dang, this shit's slow. That shit's not weird. It's like, oh, perfect example. We can go back to some first. Um, Miss, Miss, uh, I don't even want to say her name, but I don't, the, young artist that we worked with, and remember when she dropped the that teaser, right? I remember we were in Florida, you played that shit. I was like, what's that? Like, she dropped this shit. Is this a song song? You're like, nah, it's just a little teaser thing she did, but everybody loves this song yeah. or this teaser. And they're like, can we drop a full song, make it a full song? She ain't really want to make it full oh, song. Okay, okay, nice and song then now. she drops yeah. a full version. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, shoot, she dropped a full version. I'm, with, I'm just straight fan <laughs> mode. I'm not even thinking client because you working with her more. <laughs> and I go listen to it and I'm like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> Why, what, what, what's the beat? Why is it so different? The the production's different. It's like, what was it sped up or something? I feel yeah, like it was, it was sped a faster up. beat. Yeah, yeah it was wasn't faster. That somber. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, you took all the emotion away from this shit, man. <laughs> Me hearing that one version first, maybe the second one, maybe the second version I would have liked it if I didn't hear that first version. Yeah. But boy, did the rest of the fans agree with me? That's all I know. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, "How could you do that?" And what did you say? She said, "Like, why she redid it?" It was something with the the instrumental, like the one that she used the rights to it that got and bought. You know, like artists and these. Oh, I didn't music. know that yeah. part. It was okay, like, she got beat to it, so she had to go get a producer that she know to completely remake it for her. And then by the time that happened, you know, it was late. Fire uh, died down a little bit, and then the song was different. See, I thought she said she just didn't. I thought she just didn't like the the pace of it and wanted it to be sped up or something like that. Yeah, I think that's what made her go with the, the sped up version. But that's why she didn't use the, the original instrumental. Oh. The original instrumental was, yeah, I think, because she, she couldn't okay. get it. But the pace I thing. I forgive her yeah. more. Yeah. I forgive her more. Yeah. Now, now that I know that, <laughs> like that, I thought it was just like, <laughs> ah, I don't like this. I see people want it, but I don't like this. Well, that version. was part of it. That, was, that wasn't all of it. That was maybe 20% of a while. Okay. And I think not getting the first beat in her head was like, oh, that's a song. That's, that's a I sign. Think, you know what I'm saying? Like, oh, then this shit sold out. <laughs> so, yeah, I man, I should have switched it up and go this direction. Like, okay. Okay. Yeah, man. <sighs> man. And then, you know, we that all, one, that you, suck. you live and you learn. Hopefully. Man. I, I was so ready to play that shit a lot. It's so much more upbeat. I mean, it's grown on me over the years. Like, I was to it the other day. Man, come up on my, my I'm going to give it a try. Yeah. Maybe with separation. You yeah, know what I mean? There's no time in between now. Because <laughs> I vaguely remember it only because I was looking at the post not too long ago. So the post reminds me of what it sounded like. But by this point, I almost forgot what it sounded like. So I'm I'm, I'm almost at the, the point where it's completely flushed out of my system. Oh, man. Yeah. Hey, well, artists, look. If fan acts or something, <laughs> don't give them that except... <laughs> 
<laughs> whatever adjustment you think you should change. Or if you are, like looking back on it, I think if we could have done that differently, or if I could have advised her differently, I'd have been like, do both. Like do like an OG version of it and then maybe drop like this second version of it and call it the something else mix or something, right? So you can just get that out your system. Like give the fans what they want just so they can have it and they can champion it and then give them what you want right behind it, you know? Yeah. Could have made a nice little two-piece out of it. Yeah. No, what I, I know that. that. I didn't think about that. I can then. see that. And then yeah. maybe even give it a little narrative of yeah. why she did. Yeah, this yeah. version is more somber and speaks to X, Y, Z. And this version is more upbeat because it's me finding myself and walking towards the lane. Man, we could have spun <laughs> that shit, bro. That shit could have been beautiful. Hey, you, you went better than I was going to go. I was going for the, <laughs> hey, bro, I couldn't get the official beat. <laughs> So I got to do this other one. Going with the truth? Yeah. <laughs> the truth is a good narrative sometimes, bro. Yeah, but I feel like fans don't believe that as nah. much as well. The truth sometimes sounds like a lie because we hear it oh, as yeah. a lie from so many other artists. That is, all right, that is true. Yeah. That is, so I'd rather go with the creative lie because at least they don't, they don't, the line is blurred. They, they don't even yeah. know what to think. That's that's true. Yeah. I mean, I think the thing that would have helped there if you just, you wouldn't have been able to put it on a regular platform. It's like, I just can't put it there. But y'all can listen on YouTube or whatever. But yeah. So look, that's the impact of the first stuff, right? Mm -hmm. And it's it's so important to realize, again, it's like, first doesn't matter by itself. Mm -hmm. I got to make an awareness of the fact that this first happened. All right. That's why you'll see a lot of products that are far better marketed do better than a higher quality product. Right? It's like, yeah, people are like, oh, this is so much better. It doesn't matter. Nobody knows about it. Yeah. Period. <laughs> the other the tree falling in the forest. <laughs> hey, who cares? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> who cares? Who knows? Except for whoever the tree fell on when it hit. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, you one of those people <laughs> screaming. But so people have to be aware. And then, especially with something like the pyramid situation and things like that, right? You have to create awareness of the, of the meaning of it as well. Mm-hmm. So now I know about it. Why is it important? Oh, Russ performed at the pyramids. Oh, but it's important, even more important, not just dope. Because that right, that right there is dope, period. Yeah. Right? But it's even more important because I'm the first solo rapper, apparently. Right? And by the way, um, if y'all are listening, y'all past pod listeners, what was that number four clip listeners? Let me, I'm going to pull something up on, on uh, Google real quick. I want y'all to see something. Artist who performed <laughs> at Pyramid. Look at this. Y'all talked about that one group. Y'all talking about me. Y'all didn't mention Louis Armstrong. <laughs> you know, y'all didn't mention Frank Sinatra. So y'all were acting like y'all were going for the first. Like y'all leaving some shit out too, but know what? You were not aware. Oh, you did not care. <laughs> you were not aware, so you did not care. <laughs> That's the way this shit goes. So y'all didn't have to come at me like that, man. That's all I'm saying. Like it, it all y'all did was prove the point. <laughs> <laughs> And that's why, look, that's why we come at the kids so hard when you think of um, like society when it comes to marketing and products. Yeah. Let's get them so we can get in their minds first because they're still experiencing first. Yeah. So it doesn't matter that this old music might be, it might be, I'm not even like objectively saying, I'm just saying like it might be better than this new music. But if they hear that new music first and that new style first, that's going to change their perspective of that old. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like all that type of stuff. I mean, we 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 literally build society, <laughs> yeah. basically from a marketing standpoint, yeah. off of the youth for that reason. That's always the big money opportunity. That's why there's always articles like, "Oh, the way millennials think, the way Gen Z thinks," because it's a new opportunity. Yeah, and it may, I mean, it makes sense when you look at it that way, right? Because like, how many people are gonna do the research to find out if you're telling the truth or not? You know, it's not. Like we don't condone lying, right? Like I'm not, you know, mm -hmm. but I get it sometimes, you know, in, in, in the world of entertainment. Sometimes you, <laughs> there's a clear cut narrative that you know that by the time people start to figure out that this isn't hundred percent true, I'm already I've already won. I'm already I've already cashed out, mm -hmm. got what I want. This is one of those things, right? Like like I said, like how many people scroll past that rush post and was like, Oh, that's cool, and didn't even think to go look into it. My first thought wasn't to go verify or not, right? Which is a, we, we fall for the trick sometimes, you know, it's the just the beauty of it. You know, mm -hmm. you know the bullet coming, but you don't step out the way for whatever reason. <laughs> <laughs> this this one's too enjoyable. Yeah, it's like let me see what happens here. You know what I mean? <laughs> I mean I won't be taking all the way out. But yeah, like, I think that's the biggest lesson, bro. Is like 
it doesn't matter who did it first. It matters about who talks about it first. You know what I'm saying? Who or talks who about talks it about it the loudest and convinces mm-hmm. people that were first. Because, you know, yep. like I said, by the time people start looking into the truth, and especially with the way the internet works, but a motherfucker could tweet some shit. That should be trending and viral yep. by the end of the day. And then by the time somebody comes out, how many times have we seen things go viral and narratives be spun into these crazy moments? And like the truth comes out a day or two later, and like the truth doesn't go anywhere near as big as whatever the initial narrative was, right? Yeah. So even like this, bro. Like there probably is somebody who posted it to that Russ clip. Like, no, nah, Russ, you weren't the first. This guy was first, and that shit didn't go nowhere. Cause nobody. Yep. <laughs> now it's like I already put my capacity about caring into caring that he did it. <laughs> I don't have the room to go care about this new random person that maybe did it. You know what I'm saying? Twenty, thirty, however long. I don't right. know how long it was, but however long ago, right? Like you said, like people are looking for. The first in their time. It's just like history, bro. Like, we're mm-hmm. not, it's cool to learn that people did all these things back then, but you're like, man, but this shit ain't got no effect on me. Like, I'm yeah. not seeing this shit right now. The motherfucker that's showing me them doing the same thing on YouTube right now or something has more impact than the people I learned about doing yep. in the past because I can experience it and see it in real time. And, I, and that's what we always take it back to that I think ours don't think about, bro. Like, from a consumer standpoint, uh, we just care about who we heard about doing it first. And if mm-hmm. we happen to know that that person wasn't first, then we care. You know what I'm saying? We talk about it, right? If we don't know, then we we probably, most of us probably just take the narrative and run with it. You know, sad truth is how people yeah. are. And then even the ones that do know, they're still contributing to the conversation, uh, to that conversation. Remember, hey, he wasn't actually first. This guy was first. But you're still talking about it. So yeah. even in that situation, you still win. Because then the narrative changed. If enough people find out, the narrative switches to, oh, Russ was not actually the first artists to perform in the pyramids here are five other artists that actually were first but you just extended the conversation by another week you know what i'm saying another week or two so hey exactly crazy, bro exactly crazy. that's the <laughs> old person's dilemma right <laughs> as we all get older how many times have we all heard somebody older say well no first you hear somebody younger say oh that's so unique mm-hmm. this artist is so dope they're doing this and that and then the old person like Man, oh X, Y, and Z then did that. They yeah. then did that. And you're like, I hear you, but does it really connect mm-hmm. like the true fact that they aren't as unique? No. <laughs> like they're unique in your time, and it's hard to unsee them as that. Why? Because I can't unexperience my experience. Mm-hmm. So it was first to me. It's too late. <laughs> they, if the cherry gets popped, you can't unpop the cherry. Yeah. It just doesn't work that way, bro. It's like, well, so what you want me to do? Not feel as amazing as I felt? Because that amazing feeling is now always going to be associated with that yeah. artist, yeah. not these other people. I can build some appreciation for those people who are already have done it. And I could truly love and like a lot of the things I'm hearing from them, especially as I experienced first with those older catalogs. Yeah. Right? There's a lot of old ar- artists that, you know, their catalogs are amazing to me. But still growing up, you, know, you hear one thing first. It's like, dang, like, this is it for me. <laughs> <laughs> this is it for me. I hear what you're saying, Pop, but this this is it for me. Um, but but yeah, man, that 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 the being first is I think and, and that's what I love about a Margaret conversation and kind of like how we think. Cause a lot of times I, I I like to say the way consumers care about stuff. And we'll see y'all in the comments a lot of times. It's completely different than how we say stuff. Mm-hmm. All right? We will literally be talking about something and saying something like a first doesn't matter or this is first and that. And then they'll think we're hating. It's like the Travis Bot Scott uh Travis Scott bot situation. Yeah. Like us talking about Travis having bots, they think it's hating and all these other things. But like for us, the game. yeah, that's part of the game for us. We're yeah. not even thinking. Like this is like, oh yeah, no, nah, man. Well, he should have did it that way. Like in that conversation, you were basically like, man, hey. Y'all need to try to find some people who can do this, right? Yeah, in in a way that matters, right? And we talked about the music, so that's a big deal, all that stuff. But it's like when you, if you want to be in the game, actually in the game, you don't have the luxury of viewing the game with that same level of romanticism that fans think. Mm-hmm. That's why everything's like hating or love. It's like hate or love. For us, it's like, bro, it's so much gray space. Yeah. <laughs> It's like, bro, I'm with it, man. I think that's a that's a, a very important distinction to to make is that, you know, there are a lot of marketers on the on the internet who are like that, right? They're very like, you know, we only do the positive things, and you know, no, nah, this is wrong, this is bad. Artists, the artist game should be pure, and everybody should get an equal chance starting at the same point on the starting line. And yeah, yeah, I'm saying we all get the same power boost and all that shit. But I feel like we're one of the few 
marketers that I mean we don't encourage it but we acknowledge it right like it's like like I've worked with clients before and seen impact of bot setups on their back end right we've had clients before we look we get access to their back end shit we're like oh this shit ain't nothing like we thought it was mm-hmm. on the front end like I don't hate it you know what I'm saying like I've, I've we've done it enough to understand that like any game there are there are things that you won't understand how to play well within it until you're at the level where it matters yeah, exactly you know what I'm saying <laughs> like so when you're down here looking up and you wondering why all the, the the motherfuckers at the court got on this special pair of shoes? Why they all wear the same pair of shoes? And you get to that level, you're like, oh, I get it now. This shit gives me better art support. I can jump a little bit higher. Because <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It clicks for you when you get to that point. Yeah. And so I think a lot of artists are like jump or quick to jump and call certain things like bad. And at your level, it might be bad because you you're not at a point to where you can take advantage of certain things yet. But you might get here. You might rise three, four, let five levels and start looking at that shit differently. Now you know what I'm saying? And so that's how I look at a lot of the marketing stuff. All of it I don't condone. You know what I'm saying? All of it I wouldn't recommend to a client or a particular client. Right. But I respect it. When I see a game play well, you know what I'm saying? No matter how, how fair or unfair that game was played, bro, like yeah. I, I respect it, bro. The marketing me is like, damn. Like the, the fan of me might be like, damn, it's fucked up. But the marketing me is like, nah, that shit was kind of hard. I can't lie. You know? like, hey, look, man. <laughs> it, to me, especially something like bots. Yeah, me, bots or whatever at this point. That's like, to me, it's irrelevant. Right, if you if it works to get you where you need to go, we're talking about bots. We're not talking about, I don't know, something serious. Yeah, <laughs> it's like, like oh yeah, he got an extra few fake numbers, and now he's a big artist. Like, who did that hurt? That's like, that's the way I think of it. Yeah. Like, what what mattered did it to me? If anything, especially if it's a social proof thing, I always blame that stuff on the fans. Like to me, it's stupid. Like even this whole industry plant thing, that idea of that. It's stupid to me that you're judging music based off of how much money the person has mm-hmm. or not, or if they're signed to a regular label or not. It's like you want th- you want this high to feel like I discovered them. Like to me, do I like the music or not? Right? Yeah. Like that's like I remember. I mean, now, just for other reasons, you know, I be, I be stripping down and just wearing like the the same clothes for the most part, <laughs> reserving. Yeah. You know what I mean? Kids and and, and life. I'm, 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 but before I was like, uh, you know, I was, you know, I, I, I like to dress, I like to dress especially in, in high school. Like, but I remember I would be very ahead on, on a lot of stuff. Like my, my dad was, you know, from up north. Mm-hmm. So I got access to all these things, et cetera. Um, and I'll just be, you know, looking at a lot of high end magazines and all that stuff. And then I also had like a, a uncle that single with no kids. And he would oh, give yeah. me his shit. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, <laughs> and a big brother. Like, so I was getting stuff from everywhere. And I would be, so I would be ahead of trends. And then when a trend would catch up, it messed me up sometimes. It was like, man, I don't want to wear this because everybody else was wearing it. Right. Mm-hmm. But to some extent, mentally, I was like, I'm being controlled by the environment around me. So I got to a point where, of course, I like to have stuff and I like to have something that feels unique or nobody else might have and whatever. There's still an extra gas that comes from that. But also, I don't care if 50 motherfuckers have this, if 100,000 people have it. If I like it, I'm still going to wear it, yeah. right? Like, that's the that's that small little trigger. But, you know, there's a phase where you almost don't even like your outfit no more because mm-hmm. somebody else have that on. Like, <laughs> so I had to mature past that point. And that's... Again, judging something based off of on something that has no merit for it. Like the music is this music good? It doesn't matter that this person has a lot of fans to me or not. Mm. Right? It doesn't matter that I discovered him on TikTok. It doesn't matter that I discovered him in my homie's car. You know, it doesn't matter that I discovered him at a live show the first time. Like all that stuff. And of course it it, it might you got he might have a different affinity from how you experienced it, but it doesn't change if the music good is good or not for me. And I'm gonna follow him at the end of the day, based off of how their music sounds. Yeah, yeah. And, right. and even that argument is like, it's the, it's different sides of the same coin, right? It's the like, artists like, oh, my music quality shouldn't be judged based off of how many followers I got or my social proofing or yeah. you know, what my I'm lacking. It's the exact opposite. You're, oh, this person shouldn't be judged because they do have a following. They do have X, Y, Z, right? Like, yeah. So, I, I mean, that's the thing that I think makes that argument kind of hypocritical at its core. It is, is. that a lot of artists don't, the only artists who I feel like truly argue artists merit are mostly the ones who aren't in the game like that. 
Now there are some mm-hmm. who are in the game. I do think are like we've seen artists at high level like vouch for you know better music and shit like that. Yeah, but I don't know. I feel like it's like I, I just feel like it's a hard thing to as an artist to say like, hey, we should be able to like your music with criteria put in place. But when it comes to my music, that shit needs to be judgment free. The table needs to be clear. What you mean by that? It's like like that same situation. Hey. You shouldn't say, or you shouldn't judge my music by the lack of resources I have to do things to promote it, make oh, it better, right, 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 whatever. Right. I feel like that's a it's a mentality of like a certain level of artist. Mm-hmm. But then those same artists will turn around and be like, "Hey, that's not fair that you know this artist had bought somebody created a bot system for it, right?" Or, yep. And so now it's like I'm taking these things into consideration when deciding if I enjoy your music or not. That are may be different from what I could experience at my level, mm-hmm. but at the end of the day, like this, it's the it's a different side of the same coin. Like mm-hmm. you're being judged for like they're <clears throat> they're being judged for having. You know? See, like this is again, and that's why I want fans to know loud and clear. Well, look to the camera. <laughs> Y'all are the reason that the music industry lies. <laughs> Period. Because you want to feel this thing that has nothing to do with the music. You want to feel like you discovered mm-hmm. the artist, right? Do you remember how artists were marketed back in the day versus how they're marketed now? I got to lie to you and pretend like I don't have a record label because you want to feel like you're supporting this person who doesn't have a record label. I'm discovering them from ground zero. They don't have any resources. So now I got to dress, you know, I got to dress in this dingy outfit. Then I got to go home and put on in my nice car. <laughs> And, and, and eat, eat some caviar in my motherfucking hot tub, but then I gotta leave the house <laughs> and then put on this trash ass outfit again. So you can feel like I'm struggling. That exists now because that's what fans desire now. But you remember what was happening in the 90s? Bigger than life. Bigger than life. Yep. Being signed actually meant something and fans actually gave people clout or, or looked at people better for being signed. Yeah. That was an in, uh, emblem. That was a symbol that you made it. You were doing something. So you know what? That's what we talked about back then. Yeah. Right? But we can't change the business. You got to get the artist signed or whatever as early as possible because that's where you get your returns. So I got to still do my business the same. I just got to change the face, put on some different makeup because, hey, now y'all like the eyes like this. Yeah. You know what I mean? Now you like this kind of mascara. It just is what it is. So that's <laughs> that's why we lie, bro. Like we, we have to make it feel organic. We gonna go through all this work to make it feel organic, just to make you to make sure you listen to it without your bias. Mm-hmm. That's all it is. Otherwise, people wouldn't care if something came up on an ad yeah. and be like, "Do I like this or not?" I've discovered a lot of music that I like, and I, I don't know if I ever told you this. This um, I discovered her from an ad. Oh really? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and, and and it was funny because I was early to her. I don't know. I dropped. The, I don't know if you remember. I dropped the music video, not a music video, YouTube video, and everything yeah, on her. Yeah. But it was from an ad that I discovered her, and you know the whole silhouette, all of it was dope. And there's been a few artists that I discovered from ads. Nobody, I don't think, that's been as big as her. Um, but it doesn't matter, bro. Mm. It doesn't. And maybe it's easier for me to not have that sensitivity because obviously that's what we do. So we're gonna look at some type of marketing and have like an appreciation for it yeah. in general. Like, what are they doing? Is this working? Yeah, like, oh yeah, they dope. <laughs> like, yeah, we're, we're seeing it completely different. Um, so we don't have that bias cause we're just studying it in general. Cause that's part of what we do. But, but man, yeah, I, I hate these arguments where people spend so much time trying to tear artists down because they, as if they actually care about the artists and the art when it has nothing to do with the artist. It's about you. It's what yeah. you want to feel personally. Yeah. <laughs> That's all it is. Like what reason do you have to disqualify them for? Because it, 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 it's funny, like, it, I think there's like an invisible checklist that kind of comes up that I wouldn't have thought about if we didn't have this conversation. But it really is like the first thing you look at, or I say, because some look at that, is this person being listened to by other people? Mm-hmm. Right? We look at monthly listen accounts. Yeah. Go to Instagram, see if we got some mutual followings. You know what I'm saying? See, oh, my homie from whatever, follow him too. I'm going to ask him how he feel about it. First thing you look for is do other people listen to them and do anybody I know listen to them, mm. right? And I feel like third is that, is this a organic person or is it some bigger corporation trying to 
be this person to me. You're looking for signs, you mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? To see the label. Well, I don't know. I don't know if every fan thinks that deep. I'll be looking at it like that. You know, so I'll be that'd be the third thing I look for. Is I that think a label have attached that. or not, yeah. right? Are you yeah. indie? Is it just you? Then you go through and look for like other social cues. Oh, he wearing this one clothing brand I fuck with. Yeah, so I'm gonna fuck around. Oh mm. man, that dude, man, he lame as fuck. He wearing, you know what I'm saying? I don't know. Timberlands with the the the, the, the long white socks. No, I don't fuck with that. So yeah, but, right, like you start, you, know, you start looking for like yeah. these invisible alignments. Yeah, to say you should listen to this thing or not. And I think that's what makes that argument. Well, I said so hypocritical. Is I'm not saying it should stop. I just think we all do it naturally. You know, yeah. what I'm like there's nothing you can do about it. But yeah. it's only an issue when it's against you. As I put, what artists is like if if it, if an, if a fan is like, yo, I listen to you because actually, great. Actually, I just make it a personal example. Like I've told you this before, I've had people be like, "Hey, bro, like, I want to work with y'all because, like, you black and you got locks." You know what I'm saying? And I'm like, "All right, cool, bro. Whatever gets you over here, I'm with it." You know what I'm saying? Whatever gonna make you spend the money, I'm with it. That means I have to assume that somewhere out there, there's a person that's the exact opposite of that. I'm not going to work with you because you you're black and you got locks, right? Or yeah. you know what I'm saying? I I have to naturally assume that. that yeah. You know what I'm saying? So. It's like to every, you know what I'm saying, what is it? There's always an the opposite to whatever, bro. Like whatever thing you're kind of discounting people for, people are discounting you for the complete opposite of it. You might fit one archetype that makes a whole group of people want to root for you and, and, and vouch you, and that might be, but you might fit three other archetypes of other people for why they shouldn't support you and yeah. take up for you, and, and you know what I'm saying? And, right. And it's like there's nothing you can do about it because people are diverse and weird and we like what we like, you know what I'm saying? So it's just, that's to me just what makes the whole argument so hypocritical. Yeah, and I know we can't do anything about it, but you know, one of those things is gonna be here forever. But that just, nah, that's just—it makes it so, so, so <laughs> hypocritical. No, I, I, you make a very, very fair point. And then the one that you said about looking at—are they being pushed by a larger entity? Mm-hmm. Most people don't do that. I think people who are—I'm talking about consumers, right? Mm-hmm. A lot of people who are artists in the industry—they do that, right? So we almost don't count on that. Yeah. But there's a level of fans who do care about that stuff, right? But that's the deeper and that's the that's the deep more that's deeply invested. Yeah. That's a smaller portion of the whole. Yeah. Most people don't think to care about who they're signed for by um by who's related to them, any of all, all those other details that are just like technical music industry. How long have they been in the game before they blew up? Like they'll hear about those stories maybe if they're a fan and they care about the narrative. Mm-hmm. And this is why I had a problem with industry playing when it first started popping up because less because of the term and the fact that, again, like if you really understand marketing and what it actually takes for an artist to be successful, you don't really give that that much credence. But less about that. It was because obviously, you know, so many artists follow us. Right. Mm-hmm. And I see so many artists having all these conversations and looking down upon people for meeting the industry plant, quote unquote, argument, you know, and it was, it just felt like this weird classist thing that started to go on Mm -hmm. and you're hating on this person and you're trying to find why this person shouldn't be successful. But the worst part about it is finding out why they're successful and you're not, Mm -hmm. you're finding all these reasons and excuses. And I don't feel like that does anybody good. All right. So it's like you are hurting yourself by constantly saying, oh, this person is successful just because they have this, just because they have this. Meanwhile, you're not looking at the game for what it is and figuring out, well, how can I get this? Or understanding that one, it doesn't a lot of times it doesn't happen as clean and clear as like we think. Right. It just doesn't. Not even close. It's not even close, man. <laughs> the, the way these, as a matter of fact, a lot of times they clean it up to make it look and feel like that because that's a better story <laughs> than the actual story. And shit was a lot uglier. So it's like being an industry fan is like it's actually a, a good way to to, uh, to look at things sometimes based on how un, how boring this shit actually was. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, like it, but it does damage to me if I'm in this profession. And I want to be one of those successful artists to constantly always be thinking about this term, this thing that's separating. This is why people are big or not. When my focus should not be other artists and their type of success, my focus should be the fans. Mm -hmm. Right. Like I would say all the time. You go ask a lot of random people out there what an industry plan is and they don't know what the hell you're talking about. Right. I would ask my sister. I would ask my girl. I would just ask some homegirls and other people. Like they don't even know. So you're saying Russ is an industry plant. Some people who are argue, say that about Russ, right? And it's like, well, 
you look at Russ's fan base, a lot of them definitely don't even never even heard that certain term before. Mm-hmm. It's more out in culture now just because it's been pushed and it's been longer. But it's like you're spending too much time wasted on something that has zero contribution to what your actual career is. And you're comparing yourself and looking at something that has zero ability to make you blow up, which is another artist fan base and their story. You the for inspiration, maybe, but like we know the effort all comes from everybody finding their way to build fans. There's yeah. some how many artists that have hella artist fans in the industry? Uh, everybody know they're dope. A lot of people in the industry know they dope. Love it. Oh, that person's so talented. Matter of fact, hey, what I can say is, hey, come write this song for me and my artist. But like, you're not going to have a show of us. Mm-hmm. Right? So it still doesn't matter. All the industry can be your fan. Like, but until you pop and have the public fuck with you, it's not the same. Yeah. Right? That's when we, then the industry becomes like a benefit on top of it. Right, but you still need that core. Like, oh, now you can leverage the relationships. Now it looks really dope to have this extra love from all these people who have a name for themselves. All these other like things become the matter. But we there's people out there who are they're at these little mini shows that have all these dope people in the room and they get on every showcase or they end up in just all these rooms navigating their like whatever, whatever, but they don't have a fan base. Like that fan base is the thing that changes everything. So it's like the more time you spend convincing and, and and pandering to just what's happening in the industry mm-hmm. the less time you're focusing on the thing that's actually gonna make them respect you and then once you get too old <laughs> the, the industry doesn't look at you the same anyway we talked about oh boy being 31 and they're like the labels are like ah, i know you got this song popping yeah. But you a little too old. You, a too old. <laughs> you you over twenty five, man. You six years past gone. All right, so yeah, man, it's it's it's, it's crazy. Yeah, bro. I don't that even that happens. I don't even type crazy. Like the industry plant comments usually come from artists that don't understand it. Because like you said, uh, I feel like you very really hear like industry artists saying it. I guess one because they're all technically industry plants at that point. But then mm-hmm. two. They have an understanding of just because you have this entity behind you does not mean you're going to be any more or less successful than the next person. And so I think as artists who don't have a view into that side of the industry that assume like, oh, this is still the magic ticket. You're in a better situation than I am because you have XYZ level behind you. But how many label clients have we worked with where like, if we didn't know the label wasn't working with them on paper, they wouldn't have to look any different than the indie clients we work yeah. with. Like if I just looked at their applications and skipped past that part. Everything else about them on paper looks exactly the same. Only difference is this client doesn't have a label entity behind them. This client does. And then I even tell artists in that situation, the only difference that they have between, like, the only real leverage point they have over you is that if an amazing moment were to happen for both of y'all, they would be able to cap on it a lot faster. That's the only advantage they really get over mm-hmm. you. Like, if, it hit, if both of you would have hit the same day, they could probably have somebody moving around it within a matter of days, whereas like you it will take you a while to build the infrastructure and learn what you need to do and stuff. That's the only benefit they have up until that point hits. Everything else is exactly the same. Yep. <laughs> yep. Why? Why do y'all think artists are spending all this time complaining about the label not doing shit? Because yeah. <laughs> they not doing shit, bro. Right. <laughs> that first part you got to get popping yourself, right? And then, like Jacoria said, they can accelerate. <laughs> they can help you fall in line. That's why the industry plant shit is like the new Illuminati, bro. Mm-hmm. It's like the excuse to to take away and deduce your level of success. Yeah, bro. Like, and, that's all it is. And, it's, and, and, and that's why I always uh, account for like you know. The conversations we get as, as, as a marketing agency. I always try to think about it. Like, all right, these artists don't have the same conversations we have with nearly as many people as we have them with. So I can get it, right? When you're a marketer, man, this is for y'all out there. But when you're a marketer, nobody sees you as a threat. So they tell you everything. You know what I'm saying? Like, they need, <laughs> I, I, I know some shit about some shit. That it's just like, damn, why are you telling me this? You know what I'm saying? Oh, just a guy to run your ass. I ain't no threat in this situation. You know what I'm saying? Like, I can't do nothing. <laughs> yeah. uh, so you hear things. And I remember, man, this was a, a long time ago, bro. No, maybe not long. Maybe like a year ago. There was one guy that reached out to us. I don't know if he ever hit you, but he had DME. So I kind of want to say it. But I just remember this guy on paper, like just walking me through all the people he's connected to and showing me proof and you know what I'm saying? all this shit. Like on paper, bro, shipping out of here. Real life, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> and, and you, yeah. you know, you get so desensitized to it. 
I yeah. feel like the more you work in music, it's like, bro, everybody knows my at this point. I don't even, when people are like, I know such and such, I'm like, all right, bro, all of us are connected to at least one or two. Yeah. If you've been doing it long enough, you, you you connected to somebody. So, right. But it's just, that's why I say, like, I think the whole industry plan argument, when I hear it, it's usually only an argument made by artists that I can tell don't understand nothing. Because I'm like, bro, you're saying that this person had that advantage, but this artist might have been signed to this deal for five years. And it just took them year four to start seeing the advantages that you're talking about, right? The first three three years, they were going through the same grind you were going through, and they had that you know all the things that you were complaining about. They also had to deal with, but they still figured it out, right? Like there are artists that are in the system that figure it out, just like there are artists outside the, the system who figure it out. Just yep. like there are artists in the system who don't figure it out, just like there are artists outside the system who never figure it out, right? Mm-hmm. So it's like that's the thing that gets me about the industry plan because I think it ignores the core like struggles that every artist has to go through, right? There are some things where no matter what type of artist you are, like you're going to go through some very specific struggles right. and issues just because it, it comes with, it's like, you no know, job related issues. And I feel like it's like, you're trying to like disregard that part of it because they have a seemingly uh, better situation than you are. When in reality, bro, I've talked to a lot of you know, some labor artists who be looking at our indie clients, the complete opposite, right? Like, damn, he ain't got no deal, but he doing shit like that. That's crazy. He free. You know what I'm saying? He just, he just, he just woke up there. What you mean? Like, y'all had the campaign start on Tuesday. He just had the idea for it on Sunday and it happened like that. Like, yeah, yeah, bro, yeah, you know, yeah. he cleared the invoice on Monday. We was kicking things. Right. So like it's the grass, it's the, the the grass is always green on the other side mentality that I feel like both sides have against each other. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And it's just it's just weird being in the middle of it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you like, yo, you're wrong for so many different reasons, and you're wrong for so many different reasons. So y'all many. both attacking each other about the whole issue. It's crazy. About nothing, man. <laughs> about nothing it's nothing it's, that fans care about that's the part yeah nothing that fans especially once you get to a more commercial scale mm-hmm. none of them care about you might have some when you're smaller first movers pay attention to the, them little details but no once you're out there out there nobody think about that mm-hmm. nobody's trying to check from where you came from uh, if the like my thing is if it were true that having connections meant you were going to be up. That having money meant that you were going to be up. We wouldn't ever have rich people who lose their parents' wealth, right? Mm -hmm. It's still a certain standard and maintenance. Now, it might be an easier start, right, when we talk about wealth. It might be easier because that's a lot more objective, right? Mm -hmm. But when we what increases that that difficulty is music, Mm -hmm. right? The arts and actually being good at that and getting convinced of people to be your fans. How many... (laughs) Kids of people who are famous <laughs> are not popping, yeah, and actually make music. It's a lot of them. Period. Like we <laughs> looked at, look at um, Russell Simmons, not not Russell Simmons, no. Reverend Run, his his brother, yeah, the two sons, yeah, Diggy and JoJo, yeah. Both of them have the same dad. Diggy did a lot better commercially, yeah, yeah right. Yeah, the moment same. JoJo had nowhere near that. Yeah, like I never heard his music outside of him recording his music on the show. Yeah. I'm just saying, like, so it's <laughs> not just that resource pool. Like, this is the same resource pool. Yeah. Now, let alone all the kids out there of celebrities. It doesn't even have to just be an artist, right? But we were talk- that's artist specific. We could be a, a a basketball player, son. So they still got money. They still got connections and friends into music. All these things exist. Yet they aren't successful in music. All right. Like it just, it, it, especially them. Oftentimes, a lot of them dabble because they have the. Uh, the riches to take that chance yeah. and actually look at it. Like for one, you see it around you, you know, you got the connections yeah. and studio I don't, right there. I can't say. Yeah, exactly. Studio <laughs> right there, studio a right real there. official studio right there. So I don't, they don't have to deal with, Hey, I got to still work this regular job. And like, you know, of course there's certain situations. I don't want to say that about everybody, but like it's more real and achievable. It seems like to them probably versus somebody who's, you know, don't have the money, so I was like, I need to spend time getting to like money, money. This music money takes too long, or have no idea how this stuff happens. But still, even with that being said, the percentage is so small for every Jaden Smith, as you point out. Every shoot, who is who? Somebody else actually. Uh, Diddy's one son, you know, popping for a minute. King Christian, Kong. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Joint. Uh, who else? Um, I mean Willow, you know, Willow. Jaden, I mean that actually might be the the best. 
Yes. Uh, conversion rate, you know what I'm saying, from a that famous I've seen family. two out yeah. of three, <laughs> yeah. and one didn't even try? Shit. Yeah, exactly, bro. <laughs> That's two for two as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> and I feel like there's others. I know- uh, Oh, there's definitely others. Like I think like Young Baby Tate's mom was a, a, a famous singer back then. Like, you know, there's somebody who also like choir. Like, they're, they're, right, right, right. I have a homie, um, yeah, he don't like people to know, so I ain't gonna say it. But I have a homie whose like dad is a, a famous rapper and like, or- so he's not famous anymore, but he was famous at a period in time. And mm. it was like, yeah, he's quietly moving through the world. He don't really talk, tell people about that. I will happen to know because I just met him one day. Around. I was like, oh, you, it's your dad, bro? Like, what, <laughs> like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> but it's like, they're out here moving, but I, I, it goes back to us being put in situations where we get to see that, which is why sometimes I understand, right? Because like I said, we've, met these people we talk to these people because of nature of the job we have to almost overcare and even pay attention to people we haven't met that are going through these things right it just comes with the territory yeah so i do get it when the average rsi meet doesn't have that same level of context to put two and two together so now bro i've worked with indie artists that are struggling i've worked with label artists that are struggling all y'all got the same issues but you don't have it all you know is you you know what i'm saying and, and maybe like you're one or two homies around you some clips you sing on you know TikTok and Instagram and shit, and that's all you got to run off of. But right, so I get that, and I, I take that into consideration every time I think about how annoying it is when artists kind of argue about that. I'm like, bro, it's such a dumbass argument, bro. Like that, <laughs> none of us care about it because, like you said, the music is the great equalizer. The Dude. music centers everything. It don't matter how much money you got. If they don't like it, then nothing I can do for you. On the reverse side, yo, don't matter how little money you got. If they like it. Shit, you keep going, it's not, shit gonna work out for you. You know what I'm saying? Like, cause that's, you know, magical shit happens when people like the music. <laughs> hey, for real magical. That's the best way like, to say real it. Real magic, bro. You like, a, like, damn, man, I can't explain this shit, but hey, it's working, so let's keep running with it. Like, when people like the music, things will start to happen for you that didn't even, don't even sound possible. You'll hear us say things. So we have to even, in the network, sometimes recant things we say, cause like, oh, on the balance of probabilities, this thing doesn't make sense for you. But if you are one of the lucky few where magic shit is happening for you, it's going to, every marketer or marketing advice you've ever heard is not going to make sense in that moment. It's going to, it's going to be showing <laughs> things and doing things that make you go like, damn, Sean said when this is happening, this shouldn't happen, but this is happening right now. So yeah, you an anomaly, bro. Cause people like the music. When people like the music. Not shit just like, like that's that, like that special level too. Yo, they love it. Yeah. yeah. It's like, it's that special, special love. Right. Like, yeah. yeah. Like I always remember there was one year um, where we had this one artist, and I always tell people this story. There was an artist we were working with where, I mean, we couldn't spend more than like four thousand dollars on her across like four or five months. This is when prices were much cheaper. <laughs> just, just need to throw it out there for people to start putting math together in their head. But so, <laughs> and I always remember looking at it like, damn, we spent like four to five thousand dollars on her, and she was having things happen for her. That I remember we had a couple clients at the time that maybe spend double, triple her budget, weren't even getting close to the same result. Yeah, with double, triple the spend, and it, it was crazy because it's like, bro, like her shit is like five hundred x. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Off this little ass ad budget, this person is like, you know, like ten percent, you know, respectable mm -hmm. growth coming out of it, like nothing bad. But it's like, but it's not this shit over here. And it's like, yep. The only thing we could deduce it to was like, yo, people really love this music. People think this music is cool. You know what I'm saying? People like, love it, man. Yeah, <laughs> and that actually makes me think. There's, there's different levels where some songs can be activated, mm -hmm. right? And the higher it takes for your song to truly be activated <laughs> in culture, the worse the song is. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And we're not talking about like just really, really bad music. So like just cut out really, really objectively just horribly bad music. But let's think about the, some of them songs that were they would have never been a hit if it didn't have a record label. Mm -hmm. Right. On a massive scale, pumping a lot of money or it wasn't dropped by an artist who was already really big. Right. Mm -hmm. And it, it still didn't do even what that artist is used to, but it still got a, a, lot, a lot of blood, right? Yeah, yeah. Those are like the worst of the best. Yeah. <laughs> the further you go down, though, right? Let's start at level zero. At level zero, it's one of those like, yo, this is undeniable. People hear it and it goes, right? So that's the super magic. Then you got some stuff. They just need, a, you know, level one level of awareness, right? They might take 5K or, you know, we're just throwing some numbers out there, but that just helps mm -hmm. give some example. Like, oh, this one takes 5K, and once it gets 5K, it's going to go. Oh. But that doesn't mean just because your song didn't get 5K, it can't go. It might be a 10K song, right? It might need that much to, to take off and then go crazy. And sometimes, it's another thing. It's <laughs> the weird part about music, too. Yeah. 
It could be a song that takes 5K to take off. And you think that means that this is a bigger song than the song that takes 20K to take off. Some songs, right? It might take a little bit longer for it to hit the way it needs, but it's still going to be bigger than that song that pops earlier. Yeah. Right? Because there's just some unique elements. All right. So, for instance, this is my example, just because this is one of the most recent examples for me personally of, of songs that the moment I heard it, it just goes crazy. Glow with Rilla F and F, right? I'm I'm a, I'm gonna <laughs> keep pushing the agenda, man. I actually went deeper into her catalog. I'm in love with it even more. Um F and F, right? The moment you, I heard it, the moment the right crowd hears it. Mm-hmm. No, so we're not you can't just go play this for George Strait and I don't even know why I said George Strait. Y'all, y'all even know who George Strait is? I don't know who George Strait Bro, is. He's a, <laughs> that's crazy that I even said George Strait. Um, <laughs> like, go play this for, uh, let's just say, I don't even say Taylor Swift, because I feel like it has some crossover over there. But let's just say some super gospel <laughs> Christian audience, right? You yeah. can't go play it over there and expect your grandma to hear F and F and it goes crazy, right? Yeah. But you play F and F for the right audience and the more accurate it is, right? Also, the the uh, less money and effort it takes to get out, right? Yeah. yeah. Bam. You have that track. But there's other music. Bodak Yellow. I'll go back to there because we mentioned that recently. Bodak Yellow has a far higher ceiling, right? Obviously, we know what it did, but FNF could not get there, even if it wanted to. With all the money that Bodak Yellow had behind it, if it takes all that, the effort, some of the same people, it couldn't do what that song did because there's a limitation in terms of who it's going to connect with. The language is a little bit, eh, Mm -hmm. you know, for some crowds, right? Um, Her delivery is going to really resonate with somebody who's from the South like me. Right, more than some people from other other spaces and places around the world. Yeah. So for me, my southern black ass is gonna be like, oh shit, I know what this is. I connect with this shit. Like, oh, like I know what time it is. Somebody else might hear that shit, and and eh, they might need the rest of culture to let them know how much this moves. Right? Yeah. So to convince them. They need to be convinced, yeah. culturally convinced. <laughs> right. So. Again, F and F might hit with a certain audience. It might hit, uh, be it like that type of track. Let's say a level zero. It immediately, bam, you, it goes, but then it fizzles out. I'm just gonna make up some numbers: a hundred million month uh, listeners or whatever. His other song, it takes you, it to get to level five as a slow pace, but then when it gets to level five, five hundred m- monthly listeners or streams or whatever number you want to throw it. Like so, it's it's a weird way that you have to look at music and you have to be able to like pay attention to all those nuances at the same time recognizing like like, oh man this thing popped me off but this thing still has a ceiling so maybe it's time for me to get my next thing popping all right those are the type of things especially if you're like managing or the record label they have to deal with it and consider those a lot more or marketing or marketing right <laughs> depends on you know it depends on what the re- marketing relationship is i'll say yeah, sometimes that sometimes i'll be looking at campaigns like all right bro you got about another month and a half on this for it's time to start you know, <laughs> thinking about what's after this i'm reading yeah. the social cues i'm looking yeah. at things you got you yep. know either another month and a half or another 100k see <laughs> and i guess the point of that too is stop acting i don't it's best not to expect a 10 to get you to 100 Right, but that ten don't mean that ten is invaluable. Mm-hmm. To get to level ten from that song, you went from zero to ten right there using this song. But hey, bro, it's not gonna get you to that next level. Mm-hmm. All right, L- appreciate it for where it was and those people who got you there. Because actually, some of them level ten fans ain't gonna get you to the next level. Mm-hmm. They're gonna fizzle out, or they're not gonna like you because you are as big. Kind of like what we said earlier. Yeah. All right. So have that right expectations for those songs. That's why some of these songs we hold on to is like, oh, I'm not gonna drop this till I'm at this level because it's not gonna hit the same. Like all that stuff. Have the right expectations for the right songs, and put the right marketing budget <laughs> <laughs> behind that. All right, the right effort behind yeah. that, and then timing of where you are. All that stuff matters when it comes to why you market a song, how much you put behind a song, when you decide to go uh, to market that song. And if you should feel hurt if it didn't do certain numbers or not, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think that's why it's important to kind of look at songs. Is 
like building blocks, right? Yes. Because I, I think a lot That's of artists come into it like, oh, this shit's amazing. Like you said, like I'm expecting this song to take me from zero to a hundred. And in reality, you know, hundreds way up there, you can't reach it. And you know, it, like you said, it might take you to 10 and they're looking at it like it was a failure. It's like, well, no, now you're a little bit closer to a hundred, right? So your next yes. song might not take you to a hundred. It might take you to 30, right? And then it takes you to 50. But each of these songs are kind of like building you up to where you just a little bit closer to whatever that moment is or that thing is that kind of takes you out. Perfectly it, said, yeah. It makes me think of that old meme of like the guy digging up the diamonds, you know what I'm saying? Like he's like one hit away. You know what I'm saying? From the, the wall collapsing and he's walking yeah. away. Shit. It makes me think about that when I think about art. I'm like, oh, this shit didn't hit, so I'm going to kill the operation or I'm going to completely pivot. Or, you know, one of the things we'll tell clients sometimes is overall it's not a waste because you learned that this thing wasn't going to go, right? Which is just as valuable as learning. To me, learning what doesn't work is just as valuable as learning what will work because like right. you very much so could plan for this to be a 100K song. And, you know, we we helped you realize that dollar number 15K that this ain't the one. We just saved you $85,000, bro. Because you, you were ready to blow all this money on this shit that is not mm -hmm. clicking like you wanted to click. Yep. So it's like there's a lot of power in that, right, is, is, in seeing that, hey, I'm going into this song marketing campaign. Of course, with the, the goal of it doing well and people liking it. But I could very much so just be spending money to learn that this is the thing I don't need to spend money on, which is still valuable in itself. Now you know. But then also it needs to be looked at as like, well, even if this song doesn't take me to 100, if, I, if I'm if i at zero and I can get to five because of this, I'll be happy. Next release, I'm shooting for 10, right? And then maybe, you know, three or four yeah. releases down the line, you at 50, and you feel like you understand what the leap looks like from 50 to 100, and that next song becomes your shot, right? At that, right? But you've learned all these things along the way, just building the blocks up that help you get to that understanding, or you keep nickeling down. I mean, I'm at 50, I'm going to get to 55, I'm going to go 55, 60. 60, 65, right? Like, I'm not trying to rush it. I'm just trying to see what can I learn from these different situations mm -hmm. that help me get there. And I don't know, that goes back to, man, we got, we should do an episode about it whenever, because some of these things I think are usually like growing artist pains more so than like artists, artists. I don't really hear too many like artists has been like doing it for a while to have oh, that. Yeah. You know, they, they kind of look at it that way, right? Like, okay, yep. this, I would love for this shit to hit and do amazing. But if this shit set up, you know, this is the first of my six single rollout. They could just set up single number four to do good. Yeah, I'll be happy, right? And we're mm -hmm. like, hey, great. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Perfect. You know, and then <laughs> if it just pops off, oh, yeah. I'm happy. It's a happy surprise, yeah. right? But yeah. I'm not, yeah. yeah I mean, because what, basically what you're saying is like learn without dying, right? Yeah. You know, it's like you want to stay in the game. You want to learn as many lessons as you can because it benefits you. But, of course, you don't want to get put out the game. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah. you're like, all right, how can, how much can I learn from each track? I think, um, man... Well, actually, let's do this. Reminder, folks: like and subscribe. Oh yeah, that's Please. my that's my straight way of saying it. <laughs> no, nah, I'm not even gonna add any like cool. Uh, <laughs> no funny quips. No, <laughs> no jokes. funny quips. Hey, like and subscribe this thing, man. Because I told myself, well, since somebody actually reminded me, shout out to whoever that was. They said, hey. If y'all remind us to like and subscribe, I'll do it. Or like and comment, do it. So like, subscribe. You're probably not a subscriber. You probably already are a subscriber if you're this deep into the pod. So I appreciate y'all. So like and comment then. <laughs> Say what's up. Something. Just a little. A little activity for the for the uh <laughs> for the video yeah. so we can boost the algorithm. That's all. That's all. And we're gonna get into this next, next subject, the transition. Now we got two routes we can go. We can talk about Taylor Swift and this tickets fi uh fiasco. Or we can go the TikTok bots. Which one do you want to go? Mm. Choose your adventure, sir. <laughs> Taylor Swift or the TikTok bots? Let's do the bots. Let's do the bots? Yeah, let's do the bots. Oh, man. All right. <laughs> All right. <laughs> it's heavier. It's a little bit heavier. Let me find this. Because I still kind of want to see how the Taylor Swift thing plays out. You know, so. you know what? Yeah, I, I actually like that. We can't yeah. like, <laughs> delay that conversation. There might be some new information. Yeah. There might be some new information. So long story short, the bots on TikTok, there was an article. Shout out to Wendy Day for sending me this article that was written. Let me see if I can find it about bots on TikTok. And basically the person was trying to warn you know what? I think I've just put notes at the bottom so we didn't have to go look for it. Yep. I'm just read the notes instead of the article. So this person was basically warning that there's so many bots on TikTok. You got to watch out for these bots on TikTok because the amount of followers that you have 
aren't necessarily congruent with uh, the amount of even plays you get, the views mm -hmm. that you get, or your engagement, or the amount of people that show up to your show who are paid for a project, right? And here's one of the things they started. If you don't know Charlie D'Amelio, known as the biggest person on TikTok, massive, she has 148 million followers, all right? So I'm going to read this and give you an idea of where they're coming from. So they say... If you're running the numbers, then at max, 500,000 people in America are watching the Emilio show every week. In reality, I guess the actual number could be as low as 50,000 people per week, right? Watching Charlie D'Amelio's TV show, right? And I'll tell you why this is important. The IMDb score at a fairly, oh, the IMDb scores are fairly atrocious too, at 2.6 on a measly 1,600 views. Now, that's less relevant, but 148 million global followers is what she has. 148 million global followers converting to a couple of 100,000 people watching and streaming the TV show. This is where she calls uh, the big question. This is a big question. How do you have a 148 million followers that's a good question. and only about 200K people watching your show? Great question. I get it. <laughs> I hear why it brings out. All right. Now, She's saying Charlie D'Amelio was able to convert at best less than 0.5% of her followers into viewers. What? Even assuming half of her followers are global. And I guess they're saying, hey, if half of our followers are global. Maybe they don't have access to Hulu, yeah, right? The platform. Uh, the platform, right? So you bring that down to 74 million, right? Doesn't it seem a little weird that someone with allegedly millions of followers who can publish videos with billions, with a B, of views somehow can't get even a tiny fraction of them to watch her show? Actually, it doesn't to me because I don't trust TikTok numbers at all. This doesn't mean that the biggest stars, uh, I cut that off. So <laughs> to me, it. so for her, she's posing that, hey, this isn't weird that you have 148 million followers and barely any viewers for your t TV show, relatively speaking, mm -hmm. because TikTok has so many bots. For me, I'm not surprised for a different reason. Not bots, but that's just not how it works. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Like the way I've seen it move the culture. Obviously, we've done a lot on, on TikTok. Now, there are some things that are suspicious, and we do know that bots exist. Yeah, 100%. Right? On TikTok, this person even points out, other platforms, uh, and I, I have to say her name. I got to find the article because, you know, I'm not trying to not shout you out or anything. I, I think it was a, a very well written article from a perspective. It was an interesting op ed that made me think, and I liked the fact that it made me think about these yeah. things, right? And she had a chart on there too. I feel like we, we, we ought to show at some point. We, we, we do have to show the chart. Yeah. You're going to see a chart, right? If this is true, the, the bots on TikTok are crazy for a specific. Um, a type of marketing. So we will we will we will put that up. I'm gonna try to find that as we discuss. Yeah. Yeah. But um let's start here with Charlie D'Amelo and then we'll get into the specifics that apply to artists. But it all applies because we all are content creators, but some of the specifics on the platform in general. First, she called it out. The IMDB score, basically, the quality rating, do people like this shit or not, was low. Mm-hmm. It was a bad show, right? They got a season two, but it's kind of boring. Yeah. Now, I tried to watch it when it came out. I, ran, I was on Hulu and I was like, oh, I didn't know she had a show because I didn't even know it was coming out. Is that the one about like, it's just like her and her family doing stuff? Yes. Okay. All I right. tried to look at it and I, you know, this is like technically relates to work for me. Like I could figure out, especially at that time, the, the way we were leveraging those audiences and those influencers who are in there. Like, I'm like yeah, this will give me a better understanding. Man, I can't get through this thing. It's is, tough. Is that the same show where like the first, I think the first two episodes came out on a YouTube channel or something, right? That's how they premiered it? I don't know. I don't know. I didn't know about that. that. I remember there was an episode where, what's that one makeup influencer, James Charles? I remember he was on one of the episodes. Yep. Something happened around the time he was on the episode. I, I remember watching that clip and I'm pretty sure I didn't, actually never mind, I know I watched an article. I remember that whole situation had the clip kind of going on because I feel like, it, like he did it to kind of help the show, you know what I'm saying? That's what I think. Got it. Got um, it. But okay, never mind then because okay. the point I was going to make is like, bro, you're trying to take her audience to something they don't want to go, they don't want to go to. That's another part of it yeah. though, right? Yeah. 
this new audience, yeah. Gen Z, they don't necessarily care for traditional TV. Traditional TV has been taking L's year after year <laughs> for the last 15 years at least, right? Because yeah. of the internet. Yeah. Now we have that generation that truly has come up internet for real for real getting phones at eight years old ten years old and really knowing how to use these things right so they see things differently i'm not trying to watch just regular tv and yes this is is at least on demand in the new streaming environment but i don't even think to go to that you would think oh yes on no i don't even think to go to that and i'm young my fan base is young so all of them might not even have access to Hulu because that's another gateway. So their parents might not have it. And the parents are like, no, I'm not about to buy on Hulu just so you can watch something to Milio or whatever you're talking <laughs> about. That's another thing that takes away from the audience. There, there, there's so many factors just around her alone. But again, let's go back to the show itself. And they don't like the show. Mm. So why would the second season do all that well? And right now, she's the Kim Kardashian of her space without Kris Jenner. Damn. That's a bar. I'm just saying. It's true. It is true, but no one's coming in flipping it like 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 the like the brand need to be flipped. Hey, I'm not saying do those things that Kim did. Like make that very clear. I want to make that super, super, super clear, especially since she she's a young lady. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh but the marketing genius that comes with Chris. Yeah. You know, and because people for years were like, well, what does she even do? She has no talent. She's boring, da da da. But somehow we always still talking about her. Somehow they're getting the news. That's not happening for Charlie. Yeah. Period. And again, I'm not saying it should go that route and all those things should be pursued because one, probably doing well, just fine. Yeah. Right. And everybody doesn't have to even be on that level, right? Of attention seeking and, and looking um, and leveraging the industry in that way. She might want to get money. She might say, hey, in about three years, I'm going to be done with all this industry front facing stuff in general. I was just trying to get the, the money because the opportunity came. I, she wasn't even an artist, bro. Like she, or like a, somebody strongly pursuing a year a career at that point Mm -hmm. from what i understand just like so many of these tiktok artists i mean tiktokers bro i just get on this app for school no one knew this shit would go the way it did yeah i just got blown up overnight and now this is just an opportunity that i have to cap on yeah so the premeditation isn't even there on how to leverage all this stuff right so that's just for her situation alone and then we got to flip it to the major one of the major arguments that was made in this article that I think is a meaningful point to talk about, but it's a little misplaced in terms of its full impact in this particular category, which one, she talked about like views, no followers, right? And then the amount of views that people are getting, yeah. all right? And the engagement and how that's translating to other platforms. Followers, let's be clear, on TikTok does not mean what it means yeah. on yeah. other platforms. It just doesn't. And it's not actually supposed to go that way. And I know that sounds weird, right? But let's look at it this way. One, we know followers don't mean the same on any so- social media platform, period. But when you break things down, TikTok was built interest graph first. What people are used to is social graph first, right? Social graph, if you think about all these platforms, when you like they're built around your friends, right? That was social media it came from that, right? Mm. It's about being social. The people around you seeing more about their life and what they're doing and all these people in, in, in your school, y'all are now following each, each other, all right? All that stuff, like there's the people going on around you and then interest in what you're seeing on the platform being based off of the people around you and other people you're following. Interest graph is more like what's going on in your weird ass mind. You like this shit. You like it. <laughs> you might your your interest graph, your 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 for you page might be a little embarrassing for people to see, right? Just cause you or cause you don't talk to other people about this. Like we could go to the same school, but we don't have necessarily the same interests. How many people have like from Facebook back in the day? You might be following them on Facebook, y'all following and y'all are following each other because y'all went to the same school, yet I don't like shit about each other. Y'all don't really like shit about each other. Yeah. Y'all not the into same, the same. Y'all yeah. don't even talk <laughs> like that. And then especially you get older and you evolve, it gets even further away. Yeah. Right? So it's it's not that. TikTok is whatever you're reacting to lately, 
I'm gonna keep showing you. So you can evolve as a person. I'm gonna evolve with you, or I, or I might just keep you in this 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 yeah. zone. Yeah. Right? I'm gonna keep you in this loop. You're gonna get addicted to whatever I'm showing. So like that makeup has implications, and I'm starting there because once you understand the makeup and the meaning of the platform, it begins to explain why other things are occurring. So to give some ex other examples for the interest graph, because it sounds like some like super deep thing sometimes um, or unique thing, but TikTok is the only platform that uses interest to drive behavior. It's just a spectrum. And in this spectrum, I'm gonna make up interest in social, all right? So I meant to do the other hand, but I got started <laughs> over here. Interest is over here now. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, the interest graph, like TikTok is at the extreme, but so many social platforms, they have interest at, uh, elements to them. Some of them actually started fully social and they moved towards it. Some of them started closer in the middle of the spectrum, right? Then you have a platform like TikTok, interest, and then they skew with some social features, right? But it's still not a fully social platform. That's why you don't like heavily DM people on TikTok like you DM people on um, Instagram, right? But when you go to Amazon and they'll tell you people who bought this also buy that, mm -hmm. or they start to show you things based off of what you search, that's interest driven. Yeah. Right. If you go on YouTube and you keep seeing all these videos that are popping up, that's interest driven. So, by the way, newsflash subscribers also don't matter on YouTube like they used to, right? It's more about interest. And YouTube is the best example for anybody who wants to see it to look at the difference between interest and more of a social type makeup. Because TikTok is like this more black box still. It's showing you what it's showing you. You still don't fully understand it. But YouTube, it started in an era where, hey, subscribers really matter more. They moved heavily towards interest, though. And you'll see this when you go to your homepage. Everything's based off of what you've seen lately. Mm hmm you go to your subscriber tab, which most people don't even pay attention. Matter of fact, let me. Should be a mess. Yes. Let's, <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's see if I can find. Maybe it was on this page. I'm going to just pull YouTube up. All right. If you go to your subscriber tab, you'll be like, man, these videos. I, I haven't even seen some of these people that I'm subscribed to in, in so long. Oh, there goes the article right there. I had it set up and I forgot that I set it up. See, it's like when you uh, <laughs> when you put something in a place where so you don't lose it and then you lose it because <laughs> it's in that place. Dang. All right. So like just pulling up YouTube. Let's see. I'm going to just take it over here. I'm going to keep it so small on the screen though. Mm, no, that, that doesn't look great. So I'm going to enlarge it. All right. So the first thing I'm seeing on the homepage I'm seeing how Drake comes up with new flows, this disease killing 1.5 million people every year, like all these different things. Tech is the new black. So, so apparently my mix that they think I'm interested in seeing right now has something to do with rap, music education, um, health, <laughs> <laughs> health scares, uh, technology, and... Look like some nation of the uh, of the uh, nation of Islam stuff because they got Louis Farrakhan here, which I don't know why that's popping up right now. But let's go <laughs> look at my let's see subscribers. That subscriber tab. Do we even have a subscriptions tab? Oh, there we go. Bam. Now I'm seeing Gary V. I have two videos that are the same. Everything else is completely different. Everything else is completely different. So do that experiment for yourself. Like just do that experiment. See how different your your home page is. I got a lot of basketball on my uh, subscription tab. I have zero basketball on my be behavior because I haven't watched any kind of basketball clips at all. I've been off of basketball like, hey, I don't want to be distracted. I don't want to even watch it until shit matters at the end, the playoffs <laughs> and stuff like that. Why am I going to watch these games, right? But my subscriptions haven't forgot. So that right there is like having followers. That's what it looks like when a platform is paying attention to your followers and showing you what they did lately. And then home, right? This is based off of your behavior, based off of what you're doing lately, not what other people have done lately that you said you used to care about. 
they're like, hey, you, I know you said you care about these people, but your behavior. You really don't. Ooh. You like really if, don't. if if this was like oh if there was a way to do this, like in relation to like a relationship, <laughs> like do your actions really show that you care like you say you do? <laughs> like I know how you come home every day, but but what's really happening out in the world? Yeah, that, you know, that'll mess up a lot of people. That, that, they'll take things sideways. So, like, that's the difference between how these platforms work in reality, right? And now people are trying to appease people by adding a subscription tab, right? So you can go to your subscribers if you want to, right? TikTok has the For You page, then they have the- what? The, the following tab. Following tab, yeah. is who you're following, right? Instagram has had to, because of where they started, they've had more trouble getting there as much as they wanted to, but they've navigated here. Like now, you know, they show stuff they went to showing you like what's getting more engagement on your news feed from actually just showing chronologically. And now they added a lot more of the interest stuff. You'll have stuff showing your news feed that you're not following these people, yeah. right? Yeah. So what do they do? The further they get into interest, they give you the option because they can always say you have the option to go to who you're following. All right, and look at things chronologically, and we do, we do have that now. But everybody knows interest is more powerful because mm-hmm. it's gonna stay up to date in what you're interested in now. And because I'm interested in this now, I'm gonna click on it now. Oh shoot, I need to get me a, a um, some some syrup for these pancakes. I see a syrup ad. Right now, I'm not talking about that whole conspiracy. How everybody's like, oh, I was listening to you. I'm just saying the level of interest and relevancy is far higher than, yeah, I love basketball, but it has nothing to do with the fact that I'm about to eat some pancakes and I want some syrup, right? (laughs) It's that level of interest when you look at the interest graph versus um, the social graph, which I guess in an interesting way brings out the idea is interest is on a moving scale. Yeah, right. It keeps up with the user so the platform doesn't have to. Right, right. Yeah. It's like in your life, you have more interest in things and moment to moment. Some yeah. things are really fleeting. Some things are longer standing and some things come and they go, right? Every winter, some things matter to you more than they do during the summer, right? You start doing some of those same habits or whatever. Maybe you start drinking hot chocolate again and all that, all, you know, yeah. marshmallows and fireplace, but you don't turn on that fireplace during the summer. Yeah. <laughs> right. It's it's the same thing. So that's how these graphs work. And that's why everybody's like, no, we got to legitimately like focus on the interest graph. Right. As much as possible. Now, what does that mean? Again, TikTok's followers doesn't matter as much. So you can't just look at, oh, their followers and care or like or say, oh, just because they only have this many views, but they have all these followers. There's nothing real going on. And you can't say they got these many views and they only have this many followers nothing real going on the video itself is more of an individual uh entity than it used to be your individual post is an individual versus the whole profile used to be more meaningful itself yeah, right yeah, 100%, yeah. Uh, it's a yeah. weird space to be in like I mean, yeah we've been kind of moving from there though yeah like because youtube pretty much trains you to kind of think of social that way i would argue twitter they yeah. train us you know for the same way TikTok just kind of came along and just destroyed it. After we were trained, yeah, right? Yeah, after we were trained, yeah. Like, I don't think TikTok could have just came out the gate the same, yeah. right? But they're that little brother, you know what I mean? We learn from big sister, big brother, mom and dad, and here we are. Yeah. We, we just went straight to the shit. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it so. is what it is. So, yeah, man, I think it makes it really interesting when you, once you really understand how the social graph is supposed to work, right, and the interest graph is supposed to work, it changes the expectations around views. And now you realize, yeah, if my next post isn't as hot as that last post, then it's not going to do anywhere near as good. Like, it really is a what have you done for me lately, mm-hmm. all right? And if it's too different than the other one, then also... The algorithm is showing me this type, like showing my stuff to people who are interested in this type of thing. You went outside that interest, and we don't show people stuff just because they follow you. Yeah, like we don't care about that. Yeah, and I think one of the the bigger, you know, less looked at reason for that too is that sometimes people's interests just change like that. You know what I'm saying? Oh yeah. Like we've had conversations with artists, and like, oh, you know, I think I'm shadow banned or. The platform isn't fucking with me, and it's like, no, nah, man, you making content that was maybe three, four months ago. 
really exciting or new or interesting or maybe it followed a certain trend that was taken off. But here we are three, four months later and people don't care about that mm-hmm. anymore. You know what I'm saying? They've kind of evolved and changed and or they're just sick of whatever their, their idea was initially. And it's one of those things like it's a lot harder to like see at a certain level. So I, it's it's the, the hardest thing to kind of skip over. Like, oh, I mean, I think I'm great and amazing, but the platform's fucking with me. It's like, no, bro, everybody's collectively decided they don't like your idea. <laughs> and the best way that they, they can show it is, yeah. you know, they're not liking it, not viewing or whatever. And TikTok is just taking that, or any social is just taking the information. They're going like, well, you know, people don't like it, so this is where it dies. That's this it. Is, this is the end of the road for you, my friend. So and I think TikTok, like, overemphasizes that. Oh, I don't know. I think it... I think it hurts more on TikTok than on other socials because you know what the potential is. Like, you know how big yeah. it can go. So it's like something about yeah. not hitting it. You know what I'm saying? It hits you differently. And then to see mm-hmm. different people, like new people hit it every day. Like, you know, like at this point, you scroll your For You page. If you really pay attention to your For You page and like click through on every influencer that came across your tab, probably at least 30, 40% of them, if you look at their page, you can tell they're growing, right? You see, like, yes. oh, they got a million. View posts, you go look at them, oh, damn, he only got 18,000 followers. Like, this shit, like, it, this shit just happened for him, like, three days ago, right? And so, like, I think that hurts them more. Like, every day you see somebody throwing their hat in the ring, and a mm-hmm. certain percentage of them make it. And then you look back at your shit, and like, damn, not me. You know what I'm saying? Not me. <laughs> not, <today."> not me today. <laughs> not me, not today. So, the conversation with that naturally skews, or does the platform favor or defavor certain things? Are they botting or are they not botting, right? Like mm-hmm. it's, it's naturally going to lean that way because, like, like you can't you can only explain so much of the, the top of funnel stuff, right? And again, look, bots are real. Bots are and real. Bots, yeah. It's a crazy amount of bots out here, but it's about right placing the right blame in the right places. Yeah, because when you actually are in the field, things look different. You know, um, like I always, I'll talk about like judging somebody. Judging somebody correctly means more in a higher stakes environment, right? Mm. So let's just say you say somebody's racist. Like, and that's why I talk about like when you're in the streets or something like that, you have to navigate, right? So you can say, oh, this person's racist, right? Maybe that person's not racist. Maybe they're an asshole, right? And maybe some of the things they do are similar. Mm. But then differentiation is meaningful in practice, yeah. right? Or maybe they're not racist, they're an opportunist. And again, also it's part of an asshole or maybe narcissism. Yeah. Right? But that differentiation is important because let's just say it's a, a business environment or you know, let's just say we can make it like a high stakes drug deal environment or something. <laughs> I don't know, right? And this person is purebred racist, then they might not do any kind of business with me, period. All right. But if they're more so an opportunist, so they don't mind doing business with some racist people and pushing their some of their agenda just as a result, right? Indirectly. But they also, well, I mean, but 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 yeah, if they're if they're that kind of racist, cool, right? But if they're indirectly racist just because they're careless and they'll be with racist people, that doesn't mean they won't do business with you. Mm-hmm. Right? Of course, if we go morally or ethically, how you think about something? Because I messed up. I butchered the way I said what I just said. But if you go to just the ethics of it, you might have a problem with it. I don't want to deal with somebody who's just racist, at period. If you put yourself in a higher stakes environment, though, where I can't afford to just cast somebody off as racist who isn't because I might need the potential out to do some business with them. Like, I don't know, maybe some somebody's coming to to shoot me <laughs> and I need whatever leverage I can get. Mm. And I could do, I could go get some bread from this guy and do that as long as I do the favor. And cause he doesn't care as long as he's going to make money. All right. That's like that. Maybe that's his thing. I just got to make money. He's like, that's an a, important differentiation to make. Again, when we're all just chilling in a, in a low stakes environment, we have the ability to be less accurate, but when you're marketing, on a platform, right, which you related to, and you're spending money on that platform, you don't have as much leeway to just cast everything off as bots or to cast everything off on the platform, right? Not if you still want your career. If you don't care, you just like, ah, is this, and the industry's against me or I don't have it because of that. But if you 
really want it and you're going to take those actions, you have to figure out what the nuances are. You have to figure out, oh, no, that's that's not bots. That's actually because my interest is the my my um, people's interest has evolved. Like you said, like mm-hmm. we just came back to, to YouTube seriously, really only a month ago still. Like super seriously. We really people didn't catch it, but we really have been low key, not really focused on YouTube for about two years. Mm-hmm. There's people who probably aren't even interested in being an artist anymore. So those subscribers, some of them are meaningless. Yeah. Right. In in terms of what we talk about, they're not interested in artists. The the marketing, any of the stuff that we talk about, gone. Yeah, man's out here doing finance now. Out here doing finance, <laughs> right? And they don't see the connection. So you can't expect to get that engagement anymore. Yeah. Right. TikTok is that, except. Like in a hyperbolic environment, we could talk about two weeks from now, <laughs> things be vastly different. Or you got so much activity from one post and then you do something remotely different, it just doesn't hit the same. Yeah. Because we just built you a m- audience of a, two million people on this one little thing over a two weeks time <laughs> and you really weren't committing to doing that for a lifetime. So now you're stuck. In this route, because not only did we show up to this many people, we algorithmically put you in a, in a uh, a groove to continue to show it to those people first. Yeah, because they've reacted <laughs> off of the bulk of your attitude, uh, your, your your profile. So it's just like those nuances matter because yeah. now they might help make you say, "Oh, they're not shadow banning me; they just really got me deep into this space that I <laughs> I don't mean I'm, I'm way down the alley and I got to post." X amount of times to get out of it. And yeah, it might take three months. It might take four months. It was like, I had a big one. I have a funny story about that. But uh, Sharente went viral on TikTok at one point for, I don't know if he talked about this, but yeah, no. went viral on TikTok for I don't know sticking about his finger in a jar of wax and just laying like hardening around his fingers. The stupidest, <laughs> the stupidest <laughs> shit, bro. That video went crazy. He probably got like, it wasn't like super viral. I think maybe like half a million views on it or something crazy, bro. Yeah. And then he tried to flip it into like his rug business page and the engagement. Just died off significantly. Because I'm like, bro, like, <laughs> motherfucker can't see you stick your finger in wax, but I'm trying to see you make no. <laughs> we don't want to see your fucking Naruto rub. We want to see you stick your finger in some more wax and see what the fuck comes from that. And there was a point where I remember I was like, hey, bro, if you're really trying to take this 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 candlestick audience far, because that's what I was calling it. I was like, bro, we can flip it. I was like, you should, you should start just sticking random things in the wax and just. And see what happened. I'm like, bro, that shit. Will, that, that probably would have made him go viral again. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Yes. But I remember the time he's talking like, man, like, here I am trapped in a space that I didn't want to do in. And not only am I trapped in it, but I'm doing well in that space. Mm. Like, people like this shit. People from this whole other community that I don't want. And I I think we see that with TikTok more than any platform. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because like, how easy is it for you to work on that? But I was like, I don't usually make funny content. I'm going to make a funny video today. And that shit go viral. And then you got 200,000 people that looking at you that don't know that you ain't usually this funny. You just all you had today. <laughs> so this is your one shot in that space and they just hit. And they looking at you for funny shit and then you go back to posting your Beyonce covers and your open verses. And you know what I'm saying? So it's like, it's, yeah. and, and I think because TikTok is so hyper-focused on niches and my new interest, it's a blessing and a curse. It's a blessing because you in reality can damn near go viral for talking about almost anything. Mm-hmm. But the algorithm picks up on you talking about things in certain communities, right? It's going to push you towards that community. And that could very well be in a space that where the audience that likes that particular topic doesn't like 90% of the other things that you do. Like, it's very possible for that to happen, right? Like, how yep. many, you know, I think about, like, um, Lee Chopper and his, like, herbalism, you know, he's deep, deep in, like, the doctor, the Sebi stuff and all that. So I always think about, like, man, there's this small section of, that crowd of people that probably now like him and care about him because the city he's into it, but it's probably a large majority of his fan base that does not give a fuck about any of that shit. Oh yeah, so they they do not care mm-hmm. about that. It's like this is not what we're here for, right? So I could see how if he popped to actually he did when he started going that direction pretty heavy. A lot of his fans started leaving, and so they weren't paying as much attention. He came back to the, the hood shit, like, uh, like yeah. bro, they, I'm running them off with this new direction, this new interest <laughs> I have in the direction I'm trying to take. And so yeah. I think we just see that happen a lot faster on TikTok. Because like, yo, I got this video about plants and cars and video games, all of them shits going viral at once. They have nothing to do with my artistry, but they're bringing people back 
maybe if I'm lucky, five percent of them will stick around for the music because they think I'm fire or they, I, I have good music content out. But the rest of them, the moment they see me making some shit that's not about the plants or the joke or yep. the gardening or whatever, bro, they out. You know what I'm saying? Because they're, they're like, bro, I could go find twenty more people that make this thing that made me like you like this. Yeah, to like nothing. I have you replaced in minutes because that's what I'm interested in. <laughs> that's what I'm interested in. That's yeah, what exactly. I'm interested in. So. I think people get caught up in that shit. It's like, it, you know, we always tell clients, bro, like, TikTok and really any of these social media platforms is a battle of your creativity versus people's attention span. And their attention span is always going to win. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, th- their creativity and the, well, your creativity and the public's lack of co- appreciation for creativity or inclination for more of the same. Yeah. All right. So it's like you wonder why a lot of this pop shit has formula. All right. It's because we are formulaic people. Yeah, bro. We it like works. Familiarity, we like comfortability. Yeah. <laughs> like it, it works. I want to stay in this groove, and it just is what it is. No matter how much of us like like to think, oh, you know, I'm so different, and I don't like any kind of formula. It's 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 just not true. It's not true. Like we all we might have a different formula than somebody else. And our mm-hmm. formula might not be a popular formula at the time, but mm-hmm. everybody has a sense of formula um, that they appreciate. But I, I found the, um, the 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 stat that you wanted me to show. Oh yeah. Uh, uh break it down. If um oh, it's actually not showing you. Let me make it enlarge it a little bit. Bam. So what this is showing is a comparison of different social media platforms and the quality of the pay ads. So if you look at Instagram, I mean, it's doing pretty well. Like if you look at blue, cause the red, by the way, is what represents this thing right here is fake. It's a bot. TikTok is damn near all red. They're like everything when you're running paid ads is, is fake. That's what they're saying. Now we know for a fact that it's not everything. We've done very well, but we can say a lot. A lot. Uh, we, we do have <laughs> a we do have a quick story. I'll let y'all freeze frame because we're not gonna break down like all these different platforms and and um and compare. But if you are watching this episode, then you can definitely compare and check it out. And if you are listening, then come watch a full episode. You know what I mean? Come look at it. Now, you know, I brought it to you when I sent you this sent this over to you. It's like, man, until we I I was reading this article. And until I got here, I completely pushed it back in my mind when we first started running ads on TikTok. Yeah. Wild time. And we were getting crazy activity. Like, yo, I spent, I don't know what, $500 and got 20,000 clicks or something. You know, we'll see some numbers like that. And like, yo, this is crazy. It's, we're about to run it up on TikTok. We are early to this thing. This is what everybody's <laughs> waiting for. Every marketer's dream is about to go crazy. And then, what do we see on the music? Nothing. Mm -hmm. And fortunately, we had this gateway in between. So we used Toned In. Mm -hmm. All right. We're not going to mention y'all too many times. You know, y'all ain't paying us no money. Yeah, we use a smart link. (laughs) You know, one of those links where you put the music (laughs) on it so people can go check it out, right? Apple, Spotify, YouTube, Amazon, et cetera. And that gave us the clarity. That all we need to see is like you see all these clicks from the ad, but there's zero clicks happening on that that little landing page right there on the smart link. Nobody's going to Spotify, YouTube, TikTok, any of it. Now, if you are a new marketer, you might like be frustrated and think you're doing something absolutely wrong. But we had just seen enough where it's like, this shit ain't right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's just like it's mathematically impossible, and our skill set was too far along for that to even like. We can miss, but we ain't missing that much, yeah. right? You're talking about 20,000 clicks and zero, zero clicks after the fact to actually listen to the music. That's just not a thing, right? And I'm talking about literally zero, by the way. So you're talking about maybe 100%, probably 100% of those clicks were bots. That right there was mind boggling, right? A weird experience and frustrating because we want this thing to work, right? Yeah. And to be clear, at that time, this is probably what, early 2020 or something. Yeah, this was really early. You know, this one, it was yeah, really early, yeah. This one, there was still well, only like agencies could get access to TikTok ads. Yes. So we had got in early through that. Yep. Yeah. yeah. So we had that as an agency. 
So, and we didn't recommend it to clients for a very, very long time because of this issue. Yeah. Right. Like, like zero. Like, how can we justify zero? And we weren't about to test too much more of our money on that either, because mm-hmm. you know we have all kind of things that we could test it on our personal stuff, our business, and and it was just like, all right, yeah, this thing isn't worth it. We're just gonna be off it because we, also we were popping off so well with all of our influencer campaigns, and, and yeah, we weren't and, worried about it. Yeah, we weren't worried about it. <laughs> but that was an early experience, which is in line with this number right here, the TikTok. All right. Still, like, I, I want to see when this was done. I don't, we don't have time for me, like to really go figure out. Oh, wait, hey, there it is. This saying January 2022 is when this was published. That part is weird for me for it to be this big of a number when we know for a fact we've ran plenty of ad campaigns and seen some pretty on par with Instagram numbers. Yeah, on and, and that Instagram circle is pretty suspicious. Instagram definitely got some bots on it. That too. Yeah, that is suspicious. <laughs> that is suspicious. So I wouldn't say this is perfect, but I would say relatively speaking to each other, right? Our experience has been similar. Yeah. Right? And, and, I mean, cause the, the thing that makes it hard to say about TikTok as compared to the others that since it's still so new, some of it you have to kind of account to like user behavior as well. Going back to that, because we would tell some clients, right, like, yo, you got to think, bro. TikTok does a damn good job of making you not want to leave the app. Do you think this thing that you're marketing to them is good enough that it's going to make them want to leave this app that they're about to spend the next hour and a half in? Mm-hmm. You know, so I think really early on, we were seeing a lot of no's in that. It's like, nah, bro, this shit ain't far enough for me to go scroll away. Um, so there's some of that I take into consideration because, like you said, like we we see TikTok as work. Actually, right in the middle of the podcast, well, I was glad you had a camera on me, but Jocelyn sent me a text about a client that we've been running TikTok ads for, asking about us putting the iTunes link in the bio because that client has made like fifteen hundred dollars off us running ads. So people we weren't even looking at it, but people have been racking up buying the song of iTunes. Oh, that came from TikTok ads. The real people spend money. You know, I can't can't call it a bot if it is a bot. You know, appreciate it. <laughs> We're out there doing it, but I'm pretty sure it's not. So. Like, that be the thing that makes the whole bot argument so touchy. Like, I see this and, like, it's great because we know bots exist on everything. Mm-hmm. They're everywhere. There's nothing you can do about it. You know, I, I once remember reading something that said if a, if a tech platform gets big enough, there will be bots on that platform. Mm-hmm. There's nothing that can be done about it. It's a natural yep. part of the, the tech game, right? So it's like, you can't use this as an excuse. You can only use it as an excuse for so far because, like, you, you can't get away from it. Like, we have our system to... Uh, to weed out bot traffic, right? That's us saying like, hey, this is a reality that we got to figure out how to get around because there's nothing we can do about it. So rather than complain and, and, and whatever, let's find a solution and figure this out. Okay, great. Now let's train everybody that we work with to look at this end result um, that's more truthful than this front end thing that they might be used to looking at and, mm-hmm. and judging our campaign success off of. So I mean, that's how I, I look at it as like, what is going to be your workaround for this? Because you're not about to stop using TikTok just because they have a lot of bots. You're not about mm-hmm. to start using YouTube because they have bots. You're not about to start yeah. using Instagram. Right? Like, these are things that might sound good for you to say out loud as an artist. But listen, oh, man, TikTok got bots. I ain't. That's why I ain't using it. It's like, no, I would still say that's stupid. You know what I'm saying? That goes to the nuance I was basically talking about earlier, right? Yeah. It's like that nuance matters. Yes, bots exist heavily on this platform. But, oh, snap, bots exist on the internet period. Yep. And it's a huge problem period. There's, I think even this article that we're talking about suggested that it might even be a 60-40 split, 60% bots on the internet as a whole versus regular people. So when you're dealing with that, yet you are still seeing people get rich on the internet. You are still seeing people get real fans from the internet. You are still seeing these real things. You have to know, okay, yes, that is a thing, but the nuance is now you just need to understand the game better. You still need to understand when, how, and where you can cap. Just like you talked about the $1,500 people pay for iTunes downloads. Now I'm thinking back, one of our um, TikTok bootcamp members, I, can, I don't even know. He made it probably at least 5K off of running ads, mm. right? Selling merch. Again, people spending money. Yeah, real people. Right? Spending money. Um, not, let's, not let alone the people who have made more than that just from posting content. So people, real people are viewing that stuff. I mean, there's no greater example than people seeing it and then creating a video to it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. So we know there's real people out there, right? Well, we've literally had campaigns that have done over a million videos created over a hundred thousand videos created. This is real, real people. So that, that nuance is, it's always cool to look at this stuff. 
but then you always have to understand like how is this platform still useful for me if it is then how do i go about it right yeah how do i go about finding the real people how do i go about finding real people because her final statement had something to do with um and actually let me last thing real quick the plot the is anchor i believe is the name of the, the blog by the way so shout out to anchor um now the last statement was basically like hey watch out if you're getting a tiktoker or in hiring a tiktoker because their audience might not add up it's like yeah in music this is what we've been doing for a <laughs> while like we know that yeah, people's views are not their views. Yeah, bro. Right? Their their followers are not their followers. You should never be hiring people just off of that alone. There's so many things that we're not gonna go into this conversation right now for um in terms of you know, things we use to identify if things are a higher likelihood of being real. Yes. And then we can project similar results for our post. There's so many things that that comes um that, that goes into. So Y'all need to learn those things if you don't know the things. <laughs> Cause again, that's not this conversation right here. Uh with that being said, you have any final thoughts on that one? I think we're gonna make this the last topic. I know we we uh we we running. We, I ain't expect us to go that long today on, on these topics. Yeah, actually I got a call in like 15 minutes. Yeah, right? so yeah. you got a final statement? Set up for this bag. A final statement? Yeah. Um I don't know, man. Like like I keep going back to the article. I thought it was great information. Only sentiment I didn't agree with was by trying to push people away from using it because I I think it ties back to something we've said on other episodes and in different instances. There are going to be things about every platform that you use, you know, every marketing strategy, every tactic you think. There are going to be things about it that beneath the surface level look bad and it's really a part of the game. And so Mm -hmm. rather than being one of the artists that complains about it right because i think those are at a loss no matter what right you don't have to be one of the artists that embrace it we're not saying compromise your your moral values around certain things if you really don't want to do it there are lots of artists who stay away from things that we've seen as industry standard stuff that are doing great right they don't have to play it they don't have to play a part of the game but it's like if you rather than complain about it if you're not going to play the game the same way find your way to look for what you're looking for within it like mm-hmm. the bot thing. We can't stop running ads because bots are on every platform. But we had to develop a system to identify real people amongst all the traffic that we get, right? We could have very easily been like, damn, this shit is terrible. Let's go focus on email marketing. <laughs> yeah. I ain't want to do that. I don't know if you want to do that, but I ain't want to do that, right? So it's like, rather <laughs> nah. than doing that, it's like, wait, wait, hold up. Let's, maybe there's a way here that we can make this work within what we're looking for. Yep. So I feel like that's the bigger lesson that I feel like that had kind of went into, but I know that wasn't her point. You know what I'm saying? But yeah. that would have been the point, I think, if we met. Like, hey, like, this shit is bad. This shit is fucked up. This shit, But this shit is everywhere. And you everywhere. should start figuring out what you're going to do about it. <laughs> hey, and, you know, I guess a final thing that I could leave with is we know when we were using TikTok, the, one of the first things we noticed, yo, the people leaving this platform to stream on Spotify. Oh, yeah, they care. They care. <laughs> that is very real. That is very real. Now, if we're going like first top tier conspiracy and you're telling me that TikTok is so invested in getting the music community that they're just like A&R music and finding songs. And when someone posts that song content, we're going to go stream that with some bots on Spotify. If you tell me that's happening. (laughs) That would still be crazy. That would be crazy. (laughs) That would, <laughs> would be wild. You know what I mean? Like, if that's what they was like, oh, yeah, we're going to go send some bots over there so they think the content converted. That's crazy. But outside of that, the activity we've seen from content is ridiculous for real people. Um, well, with real people. We, we can only assume it's real people. But, yeah, like you said, man, uh, it happens everywhere. You can't let it dictate all your decisions. Um Again, TikTok still might not be for you completely. We have artists that we still are helping and are doing well that are not using TikTok. Yeah. So that is that is what it is as well. But other than that, um, don't forget, Tuesdays and Thursdays, people. Tuesdays and Tuesdays and Thursdays, yeah, people. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I should like and subscribe. Oh, you know what? We even say happy Thanksgiving. Damn. Damn, damn, damn. 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 Should have said that at the beginning. 
You know, I might have EJ editing a turkey or something or a little <laughs> a little banner, cheesy little banner. You know, EJ, throw a cheesy banner in that bitch in the beginning. <laughs> I'm serious. <laughs> and um, yeah, other than that, we are out of here. There, this is No Labels Necessary. I am Brandman Sean. And I'm Corey. And we out. Peace.